Hello everyone, uh, I'm Toolsin from CNFT.Tools Discord server. Um, I'm here for a, well, like an AMA slash discussion about how to do your own research. So uh, as much as everyone always tells you to do it, hopefully this will give you guys uh, some insight into how people that have been around a while uh, go about it. Uh, I'm joined with uh, KC8 and Button and... Uh, yeah, looking forward to getting into it. Yeah, it should be fun. It's a good one. So yeah, yeah. good topic. <laughs> we 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 kind of started a, a second ago, and I had to uh, pause to, to to make the welcome announcement. But we just got to the point of, of what do we actually define as a rug pull? Yeah. So there's a lot of different ways that projects rug pull, right? So you have like the very direct like team just deletes the social media, deletes the Discord, never to be seen again. Uh, I've seen as, like, I've heard, I guess I haven't seen it, I've heard of uh, projects that will mint and then literally say, like, this was a rug, thank you for your ADA, and then you never hear from them again. Uh, you have other projects that uh, they stay and they seem active, and then they kind of slowly rug, and then they either announce or they don't, uh, right? Something similar to Lunars, where they were following through on their roadmap, but slowly but surely, one of the devs left one at a time uh, until eventually they were all gone. Uh, and then there's a number of factors at play in, too, because um, there's a difference between a project that didn't make it because uh they didn't have the funds they they didn't manage their money properly whatever reason they really tried to deliver on the roadmap and a project that never had any intention of bringing the promises the, to delivery anyways so it's it's really a whole web of uh you know things to kind of explore there yeah, I think that's a good point about the, the the last one you were saying, you know, kind of kind of any it seems like any project that doesn't stick around forever or make it make it big and then you know is is a is a rug, but you know, you have to remember sometimes sometimes projects just fail. They just don't take off for whatever reason. They're either like you said they're either mismanaged or people don't like the product uh, as much as people thought they would and just like businesses, I mean Sometimes it's not really a rug pull. It's just that this one didn't work. So that's something to keep in mind too. I don't think there's always um, necessarily ill intent in, in all of them. It's just sometimes it just doesn't work. Yeah. And oh, go ahead, Jules. Yeah, I was just going to say it's 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 one of those awkward things that you know you're trying to put your roadmap out there and everything like that, and especially for projects with a larger following, um, like there's there's. You know, there's mints that, you know, they get to the point where, you know, they've got, you know, 1,500, 2,000 active people in their Discord, but they're trying to sell 10,000. So, they, you know, they get to, like, you know, the, the pre-mint, you know, hype, and it's like, well, you're trying to sell 10,000 of these things to, you know, maybe, you know, 500 people that are actually purpose, that actually buy out of the 2,000 people that you got in your server. Like it's not looking like it's going to sell out. So it has to be a rug pull. And it's like, well, there's no reason why this project can't sell out over a week or two. Yeah. Uh, they're still immediately labeled as a rug pull as just a project that's not going to sell out within two hours, let's say. Well, I think, it, I think it's been interesting to see the, um, you know, kind of, uh, I guess, the, the peaks and valleys of Cardano NFT to uh, just to see how people react to, to different mints. You know, it it seems like at the beginning, you know, you weren't expected to sell out. And then there was a period kind of in the late summer, early fall, where everybody was expected to sell out instantly. And then there was an, another period, probably from October through January, maybe, where most almost almost nothing sold out within a day and that was kind of fine and now we're kind of back it seems like we're almost kind of back to um since kind of january february we're almost kind of back to everything needs to sell out immediately again so it's been kind of interesting to to, to see people's perspe perception of you know what's what's normal and what should be happening during these men's 
So how much are you guys actively minting new stuff at the minute? I think it depends uh, on the week, really, um, and the projects. Sometimes you have weeks where there is one or two mints that are more promising, right? Uh, I think it – I haven't found any projects really that meet all my, like, my checklist criteria, Um as far as like what a super safe project meets. Uh, but I have definitely had some that hit like two or three of five, I'd say, or like three or four of five. Yeah. Right. And so it depends. Um, the things that I usually look for are like docs team, uh, roadmap, um, quality art. And then what are your, what do your touch points look like? Right. How is the Discord? How is the website? What's the Twitter interaction? Those kinds of things. Um, and none of them really, you know, disqualify or qualify one, but you have to make sure that your your product is matching uh, what you're, you know, what you're asking for and what you're trying to do, right? If you're an undocked team of three people, I don't really think you have the you know, the skills to build an entire metaverse. It took, uh, it took Rockstar, a team of thousands, literally a thousand people in like seven years in hundreds of millions of dollars to develop Grand Theft Auto V. They're centralized and they have access to as many developers as they need. And a, a metaverse project is a bigger scale than that, right? It just is. So I don't know how your undocks team with four people is going to be able to do it with, you know, a million ADA. Yeah. I mean, it's, there's, <coughs> the, the, there's a lot of things that I kind of want to touch on individually in what you said. Um, I kind of want to take it even back further a little bit, even more to evaluating why you're making a purchase in the first place and to, like what what your risk levels should be as well so like you know if you're if you're minting to make a quick flip that obviously you do different due 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 diligence on that versus an nft that you're willing willing to hold and be involved in the community and you know be a strong part of agreed yeah uh, the requirements for a mint flip should definitely be different than a, the requirements for something that you're going to hold. Uh, and, you know, realistically speaking, you can't hold everything, right? It's, you know, you yeah. run out of money and unless you're like a whale or you, you make a significant amount in, in fiat or you bought ADA very, very cheap at the beginning, right? Like it's not realistic to say, well, I'm going to buy this and I'm just going to just going to hold it. Uh, you know, there's some people who can do that, but most people can't, right? I know I can't. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I would love to, and I try to, but I certainly can't. Yeah, I agree. I agree that um, the, the, the things that I look for, you know, a lot of the same things that um, Button touched on, I, I guess my my criteria might be just slightly different. Now, in terms of the, I think you brought up the, the doxing, the Discord, the Twitter, the art, and um, what was the other thing? Okay, I felt like you had five points. Their website, maybe? Website, yeah, maybe that's what it was. So um, the thing about the, the – the, actually, the, the doxing, I think that's a nice little little bonus, but that doesn't make or break me. Um, one, of the, one of the projects, uh, uh, one of my favorite projects uh, – so far uh does not have a doc theme and i think it's been pretty successful and if you're really worried about people being docked for the purpose of say trust then you know you could always make up whoever you wanted as your doxed person yeah. Um, yeah. now if you're if the if the point of being doxed is that um everyone knows who you are so it's easier to get, say, you know, business investments or make, you know, real world connections in the business world. Well, that's another thing. Then, then, then that that could be very beneficial. But if it's just for like trust that, oh, I know who this person is, 
you still don't. I mean, it, it could be yeah. anybody. I mean, they're putting a, a picture and like a one paragraph about themselves. It doesn't really mean anything. Yeah. So I uh, guess when I look for in a docs, right, or or what I would consider a docs is a connection to a real life person that you can verify, right? So something like yeah. LinkedIn, right? You go to Rabbit's website, you find me, you look me up, you can find my LinkedIn, you can see what I've done. And the reason for it isn't even the trust. It's more so uh, knowing that you can deliver on the things you say you are. So with Rabbits, for example, our artist works in digital marketing and branding and has been doing mm -hmm. art professionally for years. Our founder is a get, like works for a small games company. He runs a small games company designing games. So when you're talking about the value that we bring as a project in our games, our, you know, our unique hunts, things like that, okay, the team matches, right? We have people that that have expertise in that area, right? It, yeah, so that, that's what that, I'm that looking is, for with the Docs team yeah, more that, so. That, yeah, that's more of the business connections, real world kind of stuff bringing to the nft that ma that makes sense i 100 percent agree but i think most people don't put it the way you put it um you know most people when they talk about docs teams it's literally just oh look there's a picture with a paragraph about the person their doc yeah. this is good and i guess my point is that that's not necessarily good that doesn't necessarily mean anything if you have real world connections like you're talking about where it you can see that this person by their background is bringing something very important to the project. Um, and they're kind of very by, by person in the real world. Then, yeah, I think that is meaningful. I, I agree with you on that one. Uh, and agreed. Yeah. A, a lot of, pro I've seen some discords and it's like that picture doesn't even look like it's real. Uh, <laughs> I, I have no faith uh, in this docs. I doubt that I would be able to find who you are if I actually went to search. Uh, and that being said, uh, there are lots of projects doing wonderful things in the space with undocked teams. Uh, yeah, right? I don't think, so, uh, the Ape Society, Ape Society, I don't believe is doxed. And um, that's a project I'm, I'm very, I, mean, I, I, I really like. I mean, CNFT tools isn't doxed. <laughs> You know, like that's it's... true. That's true too. Yeah, yeah. You yeah. can, you can in this web three space, you can definitely find teams that are undocked that are building real things. Uh, one hundred percent. Don't I mean, know about that CNFT tool, tools though. There, uh, I don't know about them. To... Yeah, CNFT <laughs> tools. I'm a little, I'm a little suspect. I'm gonna have to do some more research. Yeah, don't, don't let them, don't let them know I said that though. <laughs> Yeah, it'll just be between you and me. Like, like, like I said, this is okay, all personal and no, and no link to uh, tools or rabbits <laughs> or uh, any other project that uh, wants to say hello. Um, if you are in the audience and you feel like you've got something like you'd like to share or ask, feel free uh, to put your hand up or say something in the uh, NFT chat and uh, we'll, we'll make sure that we get a look in at, at getting some questions answered as well. Um, I would prefer to stay away from anything too problematic <laughs> in, in answers. Um, but yeah, we're not, we're not going to sugarcoat things either. Uh, and I will say, um, some, some of the things that just, uh, since, since button talked about, I'll just say some of the things that I kind of, um, um, look for. First of all, I, I don't, I'm not a big minter. I don't mint a lot of things. Um, I'm, kind of selective with what I, what I do mint, uh, because I tend to be a holder. I tend not to flip or, or sell. So, um, if I'm not too selective, I'll end up holding on like, like he was saying, holding on to a bunch of stuff. Um, but, uh, you know, first of all, with me, it's first and foremost, the art. You, you, I start with that. If I don't like the art, they can act, promise me the moon and the stars. But if I might be stuck looking at this thing that I think is just ugly as, as all heck, then I, I just can't do it. I just can't mint it. Um, so if the, if the art is, is pleasing to me and I, th I think it'll be pleasing to, to others, then, then that's when I'll look further into it. And then if I uh, especially see um, other people that I um, I'm close with and know have a, a good uh, eye for things in there, then that gives me a little more confidence. You know, I look at how their discord, not necessarily when I first get in, because sometimes I'll get there early and there isn't a lot of activity, but how it progresses over time and what 
what types of other people I know are getting into it? Or is it a bunch of people that I've never heard of before? And none, none of the guys that I'm used to seeing are in there. You know, that's telling. Um, also is telling is there's some people that promote things that um, in general, I don't find to be very quality projects. And if I see those people promoting a project, then it actually has me step back and be like, well, maybe this isn't, quite what I thought it was. Um, you know, that all, those things all take time of getting to know people and getting to know patterns and stuff like that. Um, and then after that, looking at, um, the, like, like you said, the website, the Twitter activity, um, and just getting a feel, a lot of times I'll just talk to the, um, some of the team and actually just kind of get a feel for what their plan is. Like, why are they even doing this? Like stuff like that. Like, uh, so they're most of the, most of the founders of a lot of these, these projects I've spoken to on DMS for quite some time. Now I have, um, my position in some of the, the, um, the groups I work with might allow me a little better access to, to talk about things like whitelist spots and for communities and, and kind of get a little more information. But, you know, a lot of these guys will just, just talk to you if you just have questions and yeah, it doesn't hurt to hurt to reach out. I mean, I think that's might be the best way to kind of uh, get a feel for um, how passionate they are about this and, and see it through to the plans that they have laid out. So, sorry, that was a little long, I think. No, and actually speak, speaking on your point of asking uh, like team, the team of a project uh, about what they're doing and why they're doing it. Uh, I was, one of the things that I value a lot now is discord activity of the team. Um, mm -hmm. a lot of teams mm -hmm. are very busy, right? I have found out that running an NFT project is a lot more work than you think it is. And I only do yeah. one job and a small part of what you guys see happen for rabbits. Um, but real teams that are actually building, uh, at the very least will answer your questions. Right. If they're not willing to answer your questions about the project, that's a red flag. And not all teams are built in a way that they have the ability to be super active. But if you ask two or three times in their discord and you don't get an answer about the thing you're asking, that's a problem. So, uh, a couple yeah, hundred percent, hundred percent agree. Yeah. A couple of things. We've had a uh, house of coin join us in voice. I'm not, Sure, whether he just wants to ask a question or whether he's going to. Yeah, I wanted to ask a question. Yeah. Yeah. Can you hear me? Can you hear me good? Yeah, yeah. You're you're yeah. better now. You came in quite loud. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So I just wanted to say, uh, uh, I, I love the project. I use the tool um, for pretty much every NFT project or CNFT project out there. And um, I did have two questions. It's not really pertaining to like uh, like research or like uh, like CYA in crypto or within Cardano. But uh, it is pertaining to like uh, where the CNFT space is going, and um, if I could add just one more question to that, like, what is the CNFT space like missing in in your opinion? Because you have so much experience, I, I just wanted to ask that question to you guys on the panel. So, I mean, we'd all love to be able to predict the future, right? <laughs> um. Yeah, I mean, it, it's, yeah, there's there, there's a lot to go on there. Um, I think that at the minute, the general sentiment is that, you know, ADA is still waiting to break out, the NFT market is still waiting to break out, and so on and so forth. Um, there's less of an imminency about it now, I think, uh, because of the recent, you know, overall crypto crash and everything else going on. Crypto itself is having existential issues well could soon be having existential issues which is causing knock-on effects um if everything just turned around and went back magically to how things were and everything's growing again then you know i think it would be a lot of the case of more of the same um and as for what cardano is missing right now it's 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 tough to say. Um, I think some incredibly high quality project projects coming in with a mint price of above two thousand ADA wouldn't be a bad shout. 
I think that we're seen as, you know, a great budget alternative to Ethereum. Um, but, you know, we don't, money follows money. And, you know, pe yeah, people's perception like that, is that you can make more money on a $1,000 mint than you can a $100 mint. 100%. <laughs> 100%. So but in with, terms of... With, with uh, that... Go ahead, Ben. Oh, no, no, no. I'm so sorry. I, I didn't mean to cut you off. I just wanted to know, in terms of, like, adoption and, like, trying to, like, push the CNFT space, like, forward, uh, what what do you think, like, we're missing? Not in terms of price or, like, uh, total crypto market adoption, but, like, currently for the people, like, within the space of, like, Cardano in general, like, how, how, are, how, how do you think projects like have the potential to push it forward or like how do you think that process works like even with your project in itself like how do you guys like see like pushing forward or like what, what are you guys missing as far as steps to increase that ad adoption so i think the biggest thing is the view of the blockchain right there's a lot of eth people who are already here and they're already minting but there's also a lot of them who look at our blockchain and they see stuff like average bears or <laughs> ada tunes or you know and it's not a knock on any of these projects but they're very very close uh in the to a similar successful eth project and they're like oh cool that's it's a blockchain with a bunch of knockoffs and so right off the bat they see that kind of stuff and they're like well where uh, I'm not even going to look into the real stuff going on there because that's all it is. And that's if that's what they see, they get a very negative view. Also, I think uh, for a while, right, uh, and if you've only been in the space for a little bit, you won't remember this, but it was just like back in December, right, six months ago, that we were waiting 24 hours for a seller to send the asset. Right. Like we had an escrow model as our largest marketplace. And so you compare, it to you compare it to something really developed like OpenSea, where you're literally clicking buy and it's charging you the gas and everything in the background. And you're not doing it like you're clicking a button and that thing is in your wallet. And now you can repost it instantly. You can buy a hundred at a time um you can make offers on things right all of these things are coming right but it takes time to build and with cardano's methodology of you know measure twice cut once make sure that the blockchain doesn't have to get turned on and back off again uh those things take time and that's another thing is you have a lot of these blockchains right like solana i would say is probably our biggest competitor as far as non-fungible tokens go uh and it's built to be easy to build on and adopted quickly but it's got a lot of very very glaring flaws on the back end like the fact that it can be turned off and back on again to fix problems and so you have vc money that's pumping marketing into into other blockchains and you have uh people who are going over there and having a similar experience to ethereum as far as speed goes and as far as things go because they're building on you know very simple centralized solutions that uh don't have the long-term benefits that cardano has but in the moment right it's you know it gives the appearance of oh this is the next thing look how quick it is look how well it works uh even though in actuality it's you know it's a house that looks really nice but it's built on a foundation of sand so completely yeah, yeah. i mean like I do kind of want to at least initially keep this discussion a little closer to actually doing research. Um, I like <laughs> this, this is, it's, it's all stuff that I want to discuss, but um, I, I I would rather keep it a little bit more focused on on research aspect at least initially for people wading through YouTube for it. Um. There was a question that came in uh, from somebody who's actually wondering what we meant by the term doxed. Uh, so I, I wanted to clear that up a little bit. And to a certain extent, it varies for everybody. Uh, there's like levels of doxing. And I mean, and to, to be doxed is for somebody to, to know your in real life identity. 
like who you are outside of the chain or discord or whatever like that um it yeah can, it can vary from knowing that they're joe blogs in whatever up county to you know a full linkedin profile with 15 years of address history and the and the address of his wife and daughter like it it, it varies and the and the level of it varies tremendously as well like some some people consider somebody's first name as oh you know that that's dave from um whatever fucking project that's doxed so you know th there's levels um i think um so what are the little things that you guys look for when you're you know initially joining a discord um there's there's certain little little things that i like to have a look at like you know the the percentage of the groups posts that are made by one member of the team so like you know if it's supposed to be like you know a highly active great team and there's only one member of the team making every single post in every single channel while it's while it's not a red flag on its own it does suggest a lack of interaction from the rest of the team with the community which is is something that can be taken into account um is, yeah. is Oh, go ahead. Uh, sorry, I, yeah, like I was about, uh, <laughs> I was about ready for another point to come in there. Oh, yeah. So one of the things that I look for a lot in projects is their online percentages. Uh, I think a lot of you would be surprised if you look at some of your favorite projects. You have discords that have fifteen thousand members, ten thousand members, nine thousand people in the Discord and you go and you look at their online numbers and they have 200 right it's like yeah. oh there's yeah i feel good about this man it's a it's a you know it's only a 500 five thousand supply uh main cost isn't too high nothing crazy and look there's five thousand people you're trying to get five thousand nfts that's right on the money but then you look at the online numbers and you're like wait there's five thousand people here but at any given time i can't find more than 200 online Right. So that's one of the things that I look at initially. Um, yeah. And it doesn't have to be super high. Right. Um, and there's a lot of reasons that it might not be there. There's people who just don't appear online on Discord because they don't want people messaging them or they use Discord on their phone. So they don't count as they're online. Um, you know, you have different time zones. Right. So if you're a project that's mainly based in like portugal and all of your members are in portugal and it's two in the morning portugal time uh but you know a normal hour wherever you are you might have less online members when you when you check and so i like to check it a couple of different time zones uh just to get a general feel and then i would say about 20 percent give or take um is a pretty good number especially as you get higher because one thing that i've noticed is the higher the discord the l numbers even with right and i can say this for rabbits because i i run the discord right we purge the bots we make sure that we don't have a bunch of spam joining uh and when you have like i'd say under five thousand, like 20 we were at like 25 percent online now we're at like six and we sit around 20 give or take and so it's gonna vary um but that's something that i look for and that's an easy red flag to find if it's way like if your numbers are in the hundreds and you have thousands of members uh a lot of those members are not real and yeah. you can also tell or, on or, like twitter or, or, or at the very too. least they're not interacting with the project yeah like absolutely, absolutely they have like absolutely zero interest in interacting with the project yeah, they yeah. can't be. They can't really be counted as someone who's going to buy and hold this project because they're no. interested in it. M most likely, you know. Yeah, maybe they are there and they are going to mint, but the purpose is for them to likely flip it if that that's it. And really, what you want to look for, like you're alluding to, button is people who are really interested in the project want to hold on to it and and help help it grow as a community member. Yeah, um, I mean. And yeah, I, I try to look for the other stuff. I, I like the, the point you made about the 
different time zones because you you will see even the not newer projects but the projects i'm already in and on the discord i mean depending on when i go in there it could be a ghost town but six hours later or six hours earlier or whatever it could be um you know just completely hopping so um we do have to remember that not everybody lives where you live so it could be uh very very different and um I think tools you said something about one person making all the posts or you're the one that said that yeah yeah i mean it's... yeah i agree i agree with that uh, on a couple uh, on a couple different levels um one that uh people might not even think of is that uh you know if you have a the bigger more interactive team with lots of um you know everyone either having roles or not having roles, but also all being like kind of one big think tank can, can make a big difference. And um, not that there's anything wrong with this, but if you see, see one guy doing everything, um, you know, kudos to that guy. He's clearly very dedicated. He loves the project. He's not going to let it die. He's going to do everything he can to make sure it succeeds. But at the same time, it's hard for you to, it's hard for it's hard for him to do everything. So I do like when I see multiple people on the team interacting and, and posting things and stuff like that, rather than just one person, either whether it be a mod or the founder of the project. Uh, but uh, whoever it is needs more support. It can't just be be one guy. As Button alluded to, these the what you see in the Discord and what you see as the NFT is small aspects of the project and a lot a lot a lot of time and thought and energy goes into all of these and most people just see a very small fraction of it um so i want a team that has a a decent size that that can handle all those aspects that need to be done and can continue to bring new ideas and bounce off ideas off each other so just wanted to touch on that since you brought it up yeah, I, I mean, think too. I, oh, I, go ahead. I, I, sorry, yeah, I just wanted to make the point that if it's you know a a an outright scam from the beginning, that's more likely to be done by you know one account as opposed to you know as opposed to having an entire team of people doing it. Um, and that's it's not, true, but you can also you can also you can also trick all one people, person projects so. are a scam, but it's like where and, and scammers will get better with all this anyway over time it's a it's a constant battle you know it's it's quite easy to set up another discord account and put you know founder number two name on it um and then just you know post between two or three or four or five yeah. accounts or whatever that um, was actually one of the things that i was going to mention uh you know if you have a team and most of the team is not active uh, even then, it becomes hard to verify that they're actually a second person yeah. there, right? Like, yeah. it's not well, hard to, like, I, I can tell you exactly how a lot of these projects do it, right? They they go on Fiverr, they find an artist, they pay a 1000 1500 bucks for uh, a pre-drawn drop, they get sent to all the art, upload, upload it to NFT Maker Pro or uh, whatever minting service they're using, and then they build a Discord, and they try to get as many people in as quick as quick as possible. And it's not hard, right? Like I have an alt Discord account that I use for testing Rabbit Server to make sure that when we add new features and uh, channels that are supposed to be like clan exclusive, for example, um, that I can see it. And it's not hard to make three Discord accounts give them all the founder role and say, well, that's my artist. That's my, yeah, that's my co-founder and that's my dev. Yeah. Like it is, uh, yeah, it does make, it does make me think, it does make me think of one thing now that you're, you're kind of bringing up the, those scenarios is, you know, it's not, it's not a rule and it doesn't make it safe, but I feel like a lot of the, the projects like you're describing, the goal is to kind of get in and get out quickly. So they're not going to start their project and the mint date is in three months. You know, the mint date is going to be in a, cu- a couple weeks or like yeah. a month or something like that. Um, and it's not, 
it doesn't mean that they can't draw it out, but I, I do get a little more solace in um, the projects that have been building for months and months and months um, to develop a community and, you know, kind of uh, really de- develop that whole kind of foundation prior to putting out their NFTs because, I think it's less likely someone who's trying to rug or do something quick is, is going to take that time because that's not really their goal. So that, you know, that's not a hard, fast rule, but it, it does make me feel a little bit better when, when that's the case. Yeah. I mean, I, I think what's up, guys. Uh, Go ahead. Yeah, sorry. Sorry about that. Uh, well, yeah. No, well, I was just trying to wait for the right moment to jump in, but you can go ahead. <laughs> no, no, no. Go for it. Uh, just, uh, welcome everyone to, uh, Holy Tularoni, who is a member of the uh, Tools team yeah. and is highly, highly valued and respected amongst all of us. I appreciate that, Tool. Yeah, um, I'm just outside grilling up dinner, so I only have a few minutes here, but I figured I'd jump up. But uh, yeah, yeah, I work for I work for Tools too, so thanks for that, Tool. Um, Button, it's nice to meet you up here. House KC8, good to see you. Good to see you guys. I hope you can hear me okay because I'm outside, right? But uh, uh, absolutely perfect, um, yeah, man. Nice to meet you. Yeah, you do. I also work for Bloom, so you know I do a few things in the Cardano space. But uh, if you're familiar with Bloom, I'm sure sure everybody is. But um, if we're still talking about like doing your own research, and I'm sure you guys have probably said all of this stuff already, but I figure I'd just give my thoughts. Um, I haven't been able to listen in that well because of grilling here. But in terms of doing own, like when when I think about doing my own research, like for me personally, because I actually work in cybersecurity as well. You know, I, I'm I'm doing a lot of things you guys are already saying in the last couple of minutes. You know, I'm, I'm looking at the teams, I'm looking at the communication, I'm looking at the direction, kind of what they're. I'll, I'll join it. You know, there's a lot of times where I'll hear about a project. I'll I'll, I'll look them up on Twitter. I'll look at their website. I'll, I I actually I do this for every project. I'll look at their Discord if they have it. I'll look at their Twitter page. I will look at a lot of the comments and things they're posting. I will look at. Um, I'll look at their website. I'll look at if they have a telegram or anything else, you know, I'll, I will literally look at everything. And if I hear about it in the mints coming up in a day and I don't have enough time to go through all that, I literally won't mint. you know, I'll, I'll wait, you know, I'll keep doing that. So I think it's important to say like, it's okay if you, if you don't mint the moment a project launches, you know, what's more important is that you're familiar with what they're doing. You're familiar with who they are. You familiar you are familiar with all the communications they have going on their community before you mint right it's not so many people are always wrapped up in okay the mint is at 6 p.m i better be there at 5 30 waiting for 6 p.m to hit and click the button you know while that's great you know i do that a lot too but you know it's only after all the research i've done and the understanding i've done of who they are what they are their community what they're doing um, all the different, um, re, you know, information resources they have, everything, right? So I, I'm really, I, I really try to get in depth, and and it's it's bit me before, right? There's been times where I've done that and I've missed a mint where, you know, the floor or something goes is skyrockets, and you know, I, and that's okay. I just shrug it off, and you know, there's always going to be more opportunities. And matter of fact, I'll buy, I'll still buy into those projects um, if if I deem them worthy and, and I think they're, they fit the bill on what I'm looking for, you know, so it's okay. If, you know, if the Mensa, you know, 68 and, and the floor become, and I'm ready in two days and the floor is 300, I'm okay buying into it. Right. Um, so I think it's important just to realize this. I'll, just don't rush into things. Make sure you're looking at all of the possible, you know, and, and sometimes I probably take it to the extreme, but it's always really important to just look at everything out there don't look at just their discord right what 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 they're talking about in there not just their team communicating look at literally everything you can i'll, I'll look at other people talking about it or you know i'll, I'll get really in, in depth in that before i even start talking in their discord um so i think you know so i guess that's where my thought stops but yeah I think you brought up some um, really great points, and I, I think we you have to realize when you're going into some of these projects. I like how you said that you wouldn't you wouldn't buy it unless you know you had 
done your research and we're, we're confident in it because I, I feel like with NFTs, um, more than, more than a lot of things I've, I've seen is there's, there's really a significant emotional FOMO that goes into, um, into these projects. And I, I think, uh, you know, I've seen a lot of people getting into these things just because that's what people are doing and they don't want to be left behind. They see Kongs take off or space buds or whatever. Um, and for me, and it's hard sometimes, you know, because I think we all, you know, have a little bit of that uh, emotional uh, fear of missing out on the next big thing, you know, uh, but, but, but sometimes I do have to kind of, you know, you got to take the emotion out of it sometimes and really think about what you're doing. And there's been a couple of projects where I decided I was going to just mint one. I was going to mint one. And if it took off, then great. At least I had one. Um, and if it, and if it didn't, then, then great. I'm glad I only got one. And, and sometimes I kind of, I guess, um, I, I limit I limit what what I buy if I'm if I'm kind of in that position where um, you know I don't feel like I I have a good feel for it uh, but you know it's fifty eight uh, you know that's fine I, I can spend fifty eight on on one and if it doesn't take off then that's not a, not a huge deal um, but I, I think you de- you definitely do have to to be careful because I think it, I think it happens to all of us and e- even the guys I know that do a really good job with this. Um, I know that they've uh, they've definitely had their moments where they've really wished they didn't mint 150 of that NFT that is now worth five ADA. Yeah, yeah, that's a good point. I mean, it's you know you you got to like what you're getting involved with too. I mean, I, everybody uses the cliche statement of um, you have to you know the most important thing is loving the art. And while we all do, while, while that is very important, right? That's that's not the reality to 100 percent right but you know that yeah. that absolutely helps so when i get involved in a project if i like what you know at, you know in, in the the detour for a minute away from the dyor thing i think i heard you guys talking earlier about uh um losing my train of thought here um maybe maybe i'll come back to that hopefully i'll be able to stay long enough to come back to my thought but i'll stop there for the moment Oh, yeah, sorry, it's just some unexpected movement going on there. Uh, yeah, there we go. Uh, welcome to uh, Goat Nasty, uh, who's uh, very well known in the space. Uh, I'm sure he's got some uh, thoughts and words of wisdom to share with us. Yo, what's up, guys? <laughs> Checking in, I heard KC8 was in here talking, and uh, yeah, just uh, I'll catch up and listen in, and if I have any um good good alpha or any info to add I'll, I'll jump in thanks for having me up so man tool you're 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 letting you're letting anyone in here now wow <laughs> so yeah, yeah. I mean, really getting really dropped here <laughs> yeah they take yeah. easy <laughs> so oh I jesus mean, my god that sounded rough it's sunday he feels bad so he's just you know throwing some charity out there <laughs> <laughs> so um being realistic a lot of the at least initial space in minting is about flipping and stuff like that if you're looking to mint purely to flip what what are your requirements for okay i'll, I'll you know I'll, I'll press the lottery button and see if i can double or triple you know after mint having managed to get into a mint like what kind of metrics are you looking for for that for that to be reasonable is it like you know three times the number of mints in discord uh or th- three times the number of mints available in as discord members or five times or you know what kind of twitter following compared to mint numbers and things like that are you looking for the biggest metric that i actually use is like discord reactions on announcements for mint day yeah. because so Basically, if I'm not holding a project, it doesn't pass my list. The only thing that it will ever be for me is a flip, right? And so I I go to Discord the day of Mint, and I look and see how many people are there, right? And and how they're responding, right? If, there's a, if they make an announcement and they say, hey, by the way, our Mint is in, 
one hour and seven people react, well, there you go. But if you have, you know, hundreds and hundreds of people reacting for this mint that's going to have very few NFTs, well, then there you go. You found your flip. Yeah, I mean, that's, that's, that's a good one that I certainly, one of the first things that I do when I join a project, like checking it out, is like how many people are responding. Because um, those are the people that are actually there to read the announcements and give a shit. Yeah, I also see kind of what I, I don't, I don't, I do very minimal flipping. And um, if I do plan, plan to flip, just me personally, is I usually, it, it's, if I'm flipping, it's probably because I, I think it's an okay project, but I can, I, I know myself and I can see that it's not the art or the community or something that, I'm going to follow through with. It's not something I'm going to pay close attention to. Um, so uh, it's not always that it's a bad project necessarily. It's just, you know, I know myself and, yeah. and what I'm going to put time in, time into. So, but I, I will limit myself. I'll, I'll probably only get three or four or something like that. And, and I'll, I'll get those three or four um, and then uh, get rid of them. And uh, sometimes I'll just leave the discord and everything else because I don't even want to know, you know, whether it does terribly or explodes, I just would prefer not to know. But uh, some of the things I do look for is I look for people talking about the project also. Like, um, you know, there's some of these projects that, that I have. And like I said, it's only been just a couple that I've ever, ever done this for. Um, but uh, there's always a decent amount of people talking about it, you know, and, and not talking about it in a way of, I think this is a good flip. You know, talking about it in a way of that they really like it. Um, so although I, uh, you know, personally don't, don't like it, you know, I get a, a sense that there's enough groundswell that other people like it, that I, I don't feel like I'm taking a big risk in minting, you know, three to five of these and, and, and selling that, selling them again. Um, you know, if I don't, if I don't, even if there's, even if there's 20,000 people in the discord, if I don't, if I don't get that feel um then i still won't mint any there's there an example of a mint i think it was a lot maybe it was, I think it was last week where there's a discord that has and i'm not going to call out this project but there's a discord that has a lot of people in it i think eighteen thousand people or or something like that um and i, I decided to just mint one and see what see what happens and um it, it did it did not not go well uh in terms of the the mint price and the reason I just did one, like I said, is because I didn't get that feel for from, from around the community, even though there was all these people in the Discord. So, um, you know, I think that's another another way to kind of kind of gauge um, gauge things for long term, but also for for flips. Just feel see how other people people feel about it. Yeah, I mean, it's 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 yes. also interesting to note which projects that use artificial um means to raise engagement whether it's like you know you must reach level 173 yes. to be able to get a whitelist mint you must invite 25 people to get a whitelist mint you must you know all these things which they give more um they, they yeah it, it it gives more to uh more sorry i'm losing the right word here it's more incentive to uh to, to game the system and, yeah you know, and i think i think it's, there's it's hard to there's... pick out the wheat from the chaff when everybody's spamming you know when drop to get one experience and they need 135,000 experience yeah. yeah i think yeah. the the in, the invite aspect is okay i think you can do some sort of invite thing you know um and i think uh, I, i'm fine with that as a way of um pulling more more people in uh to a point you know i've seen very extremes of this that are i very much dislike and, and uh i think you're talking about the the, the experience points in the discord i i'm definitely not a fan of that and i i don't know that that's always beneficial to a project no i mean i i yeah hey. Yeah, sorry, yeah. <laughs> yeah, go Tull, 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 if you want to go, go ahead. I, I was 
well, I, I only have a couple more minutes that I have to drop off. Yeah, 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 ready, but um, do, do you, I, and I apologize, Toolson. Do you mind if I mentioned something earlier that's unrelated to yeah, DYOR? Yeah, go, go for it, Mo. Okay. <laughs> um, I think I think Button, you were talking about it earlier, or maybe somebody else, but about adopt or about bringing people in right around it. You know, a, a, how do you build adoption? Not only that, but once you build that adoption, how do you build that staying factor? How do you keep people around, right? So you see a lot of projects, and and, and again, nothing wrong with it. I mean, they're you know, they they just release some art, they mint, and and that's great, um, and that that's fun. But how do how do you get people to adopt, and how do you get people to stay? And that's really doing things like. What, what you guys are doing at Dead Rabbits, you're doing a lot of activities. You're doing real life activities, right? Where people have to go find those uh, things. For, I, I'm forgetting, forgetting exactly what it is, right? But you're having those real life activities where people have to do things or where Cornucopius is working on that project or where, um, you, you know, there's other people are trying to do things where, like, you know, I, I think back in the day when I used to play World of Warcraft or when I played Ashron's Call, if anybody remembers that game, where <laughs> it wasn't just playing or doing or being involved. It was things I had to keep doing, and it was enjoyable to do those, and I had to keep doing them to do more things. Um, you know, so I, I think I watched a video of somebody recording Team Virtua at Consensus talking about uh, the NFTs from uh, the the Cardano um summit last year where you had the seven or eight nfts and now they're building that yeah you know the cliche metaverse and all of that right but they're they're doing things where their their idea is to try to get people to stay in and that's what i look for and that's what i'm excited about things where once i get that nft or or, or the asset right what what next am i doing i want to have fun with the community right i want to be involved and and b build friendships and do activities and things like that right so i think that's you know, that's really important for projects to see that. And, you know, like I said, I see you guys doing that at Dead Rabbits and I see other projects trying to figure that out and uh, how that works and what they want to do with it. Right. Yeah. So I, I, as a, as a known serial mentor, uh, I think I can throw some, <laughs> some, some good words yeah. out here yeah. and, uh, I, I do agree with what was just said about, you know, finding these these projects, trying to find the right balance of um, trying to figure out how to keep people engaged. That is absolutely true, and uh, I think Dead Rabbits have nailed it on the head with that. And, um, you know, there's some other projects that I'm excited for that I'm involved with that are working to, you know, continue to, to build and create new ways where people can uh, – have fun and you know, and still you know make friends like uh, Mr. Tularoni Tula said. Okay, holy holy Tularoni got it. Um, yeah, I'm actually so, uh, I'm actually holy macaroni. So if you guys find me holy on Discord, or anything, I'm yeah. holy macaroni. <laughs> I'm holy Tularoni on the tool, on CNFT tools because I work for him. But yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. We, so, we we weren't giving a choice on the me, names. <laughs> Right, you gotta throw it, throw it in there. I get it. I'll be tool nasty, <laughs> nasty tool. Oh, that sounds good, right? <laughs> hey, that's a good one. That's a good one. That one. That I one mean, it, well. it, it's, it's worth it's worth paying your salary just for that alone. I think. <laughs> right, nasty tool. Yeah, yeah. I'm digging it. <laughs> Fucking perfect. So, as far as minting for me, you know, I I identify, I do have to to relate or like the art. I can't get into any, I can't mint if I don't, because for me, I'm very like aesthetic person. If it's in my wallet, I want it to look decent. I like my wallet looking clean. Um, so I identify projects, you know, oh, the art's good. The art's awesome. The art's amazing. Sort of like that. And then, you know, once it's getting closer to mint day for me, then it's about being in the discord, seeing the hype around it. Like Casey was, Casey was saying, seeing seeing the actual what what's going on in the chat and then also um seeing what's going on on twitter i think it's important to um to have both those aspects in your in your repertoire to see what's going on as far as uh what the what the twitter engagement is and are people already throwing throwing posts out are they already doing the the memes and having fun like that and uh you know i just jumped in to um 
to the degenerates, like, I think there's a thousand left. And, you know, I had identified the art as something that was pretty cool to me. And then when I jumped on, that community was already going. They were already having fun. They weren't really talking about, hey, when when when's a uh, D-list contest? When's a sweeping contest? No, they were enjoying the, um, the mint and the process and seeing the new rats come out. And then people are posting on Twitter. Um, so... At that point, yeah. I mean, then I started minting. I can't stop. And then, um, yeah. And then you can you can see uh, some some strong alphas coming around into the chat to mint too. That's you know that's a yeah. bullish sign that you want to pay attention to. Um, not that you should just be following, you know, you know, being a follower and just because you see someone minting, like, oh, I got to do it too, because that it doesn't always work, right? But um, there is bullish signs that you can look for that there are some some strong diamond holders and you know what those people have a lot of ADA to spend too so like once once you get them in there spending like that's only good for the project so um and then from there it's just kind of um do you want to do a quick flip or do you want to um continue to hold and see what the project brings and hope the price rises um so you know when I meant I I I do both I, I I'm, I love the art of the sale too, so I'll um, I have no problem selling, but um, it's 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 strategically for me seeing how the price action is, and um, I'm not I guess I'm not afraid to take a loss and hold either. So there's a lot of variations that go into it, but I think uh, the most important thing is do, do like the art, do like what you're getting into, do your do your research, and um, be active in the community if you can too to you know, you can't expect everyone to do the work for you at a certain point. So you want to you want to get in there and have fun with everyone, make friends, and um, then you know, from there you can can uh, strategically try and figure out if you want to hold, if you want to flip. You know, make a decision and um, and do your best. And then right now it's hard. Right now there's not a lot of sales going out there right now, so a little different ball game and right now you got to have some if you're gonna mint you're gonna you're gonna have to take that into account that you know we're we are kind of in a bear market and um you might need to hold for longer but i do think we'll we'll turn it back around and um there'll be some some strong price action coming soon yeah i mean like especially with um how the market's progressing for most of the market with new mints at the minute is that there is almost always a dip after the initial mint or while or even while the mint is going on and that's that's a lot of that is people thinking well you know the one i've got isn't very rare i want to try and get my money back and try and get another one um and that kind of downward pressure generally drops below mint price sometimes it does sometimes it doesn't the, the projects where it doesn't you tend to, it tends to be the type of projects that do sell out in you know very quick order and there isn't enough time to react and decide during the mint whether you should mint or not because you're either you've either got it or you haven't so you know be, being prepared from the start and knowing why you're minting something is very important like you know are you minting it because it's a flip or are you minting it because you hold it and you won't like it and it's kind of good to have that decision made before you mint rather than what i do is like oh i really really like that and then i'm like mm, well actually you know maybe i should flip because you know financial this financial that every all gone quiet now <laughs> does, does seem it for a minute your uh your voice is very uh darth vadery though my voices yes ah shit this is my yeti mic let's let me figure it out makes you sound incredibly stoned as well actually no <laughs> so is that still the same that is very much still the same oh we got uh watubi who's uh coming up to join us to say something Hello. Hello there. I uh, I had some questions. I didn't know if you could type in a chat, but I learned I could request to talk. <laughs> well, um, I, I is, there, 
Okay. Is there like a a time factor that helps, like how long NFT's been around, or not? Is that not really like a factor towards it? I mean, in me, terms of like if like it was launched, you know, it's been out for like a year still, and they're still like in development, but they're still like going. I would in terms say... of like, they've been de- they've been developing the NFT for a year, and they just haven't minted yet, or is that the question? Um. So, like, for example, like, the one I'm with now, I don't know when they were found. I think they've been around for a while, but they're doing, like, NFTs, and they're just trying to make, like, an actual game. So they're doing, like, different mints as they go for, like, the game as they go. And, like, right now, like, they're under floor price, and, like, there's... Like, I'm in their Discord, and people are like, this is bad, it's under floor price, and there's people saying everything's... Every price is down low right now. So it's like you see like people like questioning it, and then you see like the main supporters that are like with it. So it's like you're I'm, you're getting like two different like uh, sides. Yeah. So, so it's like, I, don't I think know. I think that situation's a, a little tough. Um, that's very you know that's very different than most of these NFT projects, and um, you know it should give people uh, feel make people feel a little good that the team is. The, the you know the team's not going anywhere and they're going to keep developing unfortunately in the nft space um uh i'd say at least half the people want instant gratification so it's going to be harder i think for projects that are minting multiple in multiple stages and building over a long period of time to keep people's attention and keep the price uh, you know above mint price just because of the um the mindset of of most people in in the nft community it doesn't mean it's a bad project or you know um it won't be very successful in the end but i'd say for those type of projects yeah it's probably a little harder to to kind of keep the keep the value up um like that yeah that's what people because there's people saying that they wanted them to to sweep the floor and, and make the floor price go up and then there's people that were arguing against it saying that doesn't help really anything and yeah, I'd say kind of that manufacturing a floor. I'd say that it's not everyone, but but uh, I'd say a lot of people that are very adamant about it. In my in my opinion, my opinion, a lot of people that are very adamant about sweeping the floor are likely people who want to sell their NFT and would like that floor to go up so they can sell their NFT or potentially have their NFT swept up with that floor. And the people who really care about the project and believe in the long-term long- longevity of it uh, know that that's just a short-term bump that is not sustainable. Um, so uh, I, you know, I, I think the people that that call hard for floor sweeps um, with and that alone now, you know, there's there's situations where that can be combined with with other things the project's doing and, and this and that, and that's fine. But for just a straight floor sweep, that's short-lived and um, you know, a, a very short-term gain. Usually, usually things settle back out to to where they were before. Um, so, yeah. you know, it, it... I was gonna say it's the same with dealist contests too, right? Yeah. Because what you yeah. have is essentially uh, you're not like to a to a very bad point, but you're almost manipulating the market, right? When you say, "Hey, dealist, and we'll give you this," or "Dealist, and we're gonna do a giveaway." Uh, for anybody who delists the rabbit in the next whatever, right? Well, the reason that people sell their NFTs is because they don't want the NFT. They'd rather have the ADA. And whatever you are doing to incentivize them to sweep or to delist, that's not going like their thought on the NFT that they're selling isn't going to change because of that. And so like with a delist competition, for example, everybody's going to delist to try to win the prize. Yeah. And then as soon as that prize is gone, and, yep. and you have no incentive... <laughs> yeah. Everything's relisted for five ABA cheaper yeah. because they got, they got some extra value out of it with new NFT. Yeah. Yeah. Gotcha. So, or, or, okay. or if they win just an a, NFT Just a now, different now perspective on that. Just a Go different ahead. perspective to answer uh, Watubi's question on for, for my opinion on that is... Um, that really comes back to do your own research as far as that project. If you trust the team and the development team, you need to think a lot of people like KC8 were saying that aren't 
in it to to wait. A game's going to take more than six months. A game's going to take a long time to create. It can be up to, you know, three to five years. So with with your question is, you know, what what or as long as you think the team is still developing and you've done your research on that project and you believed in it from the jump, then, you know, you don't really want to worry about the floor price. You just want to worry about the development of the project. And if they're going to do what they what they set out to do, you know, I think it'll come come around and um, you'll reap the rewards for for being patient. And, um, you know, that's not everyone's style. That's not personally um, I'm not into the gaming NFTs personally, but I think that, you know, you if you if you do your research on it and they're continuing to to build, I think um, you'll you'll do just fine on that project. You just need to be patient. Okay, gotcha. I will That's say my, my 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 personal experience. There is a I have a bunch of uh, a certain NFT that I really love that um, that I know is supposed to have a game at, at some point in my lifetime, and uh, and uh, I'm gonna keep holding on to them because I believe in the team and I'm excited about the game and I, I like my NFTs. Um, and for me, the 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 price of them and and what I can sell them for doesn't doesn't really really mean much yeah and i would say with any gaming nft you really want to look at the team and what their expertise is and this is where a doc's Mm -hmm. team is very very important right because you need to know that the team can deliver on their promises right if you're buying an nft that's just art right like something like el matador or pendulum where they say the like you're buying art this is what you're getting uh, understand that that's all you're buying is art, right? Like it's okay for the art to come from somebody who's unknown. But if you're saying, Hey, I am going to build a game that you are going to be able to play. That is why you should give me money. Then you better be able to back up the fact that you are going to build a game, right? Because I can tell you right now, if button said he was building a game, I don't know how to build a game. <laughs> <laughs> yeah okay I, I agree with that that's i agree with that 100 yep. yep. not, not the button part i think you could do it man i really do <laughs> i could design yeah, a game. I, I think you i think you're building games uh with rabbits to be honest right now so they're you know but yeah to go to your point there is if you're the team should be doxxed they should have experience within making a game they should have worked for x and x company um so yeah 100 percent. that's when it comes to the to the point of doing your own research you know yeah they they oh, do man. uh they do said they paid like they are paying people to develop it and they have like a legit like people and they, they post updates like as they as they make it and they do have like a release date uh in mind well i think also you know um this is probably a project that you've spent a lot of time in and, and you 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 know a lot about so um sometimes you just uh, again, you have to trust your your feel for it and and kind of the what relationships you've developed and what you've learned personally and and as always, you know, kind of make the best decision for you. But if it if it's something you really like, then uh, there, then you know, I wouldn't I wouldn't want to worry about what those people are saying and about the floor price and stuff like that. Yeah, I mean, like, okay, a, a point I wanted to bring up is yeah, like games do take a long time, like. Even with all the money in the world and all the devs in the world, games take a long time, and good games take even longer. And yeah, they're, 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 there's a lot of pressures on a mint price. Um, and you know, if you're looking at a development time of you know a year or two years, do you need you know is it better to have a mint price that pays for your development, but or or to you know double or triple the mint price to to be able to pay for a year's worth of height and you know salary of someone to promote the project and do all that everything full time and you know that there's a lot of pressure to keep costs down and you know it's 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 also unreasonable to expect hype for the development of a project to to remain at say at, at you know launch slash kickstarter levels for the entire time because i mean a lot of game nfts are effectively kickstarter nfts like, okay, yeah, gotcha. 
Yeah, it's true. I will say the the game the game that I'm holding that no no one on the team is doxxed, so um I guess I'll see, I guess I'll see what happens. But yeah, yeah. I mean it's, it's also the thing that, you know, like 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 Kickstarter, not every project is gonna make it. For whatever. That's true. Well I've got to I've got for to sure. know a lot of the people on the team, so I feel pretty confident about it now. For sure. <laughs> and again, that's not to say that a dox <laughs> an undox team can't deliver. Right, like I believe, I imagine that like Clay's team, for example, which is a team that's done nothing but deliver since they've launched. Right, I don't believe they were doxed immediately. Um, right, there, there's plenty of examples. There's always exceptions to the rule. Um, yeah, but I, I but, agree with you, Button, that, that it should make you feel better if they are doxed and they are in that field and stuff. Like I 100% agree there. Yeah, like so. A good example of this, and this isn't to talk trash about Pavia, because uh, realistically, they are the biggest metaverse project on the network, and uh, I hope that they actually build a product. But I look at it like Pavia's team, and I look at Cornucopia's team. Well, who is Pavia's team? Well, it's Morgan, and he's got a board ape as a picture. And their CEO, or their chief operating officer is Paul, although I do believe Paul is Docs, actually. Uh, so this is maybe a little bit outdated example, but then every other one of their developers is not. But then you go look at Cornucopias, or you look at Sandbox, or Decentraland, and you look at their entire team, and you see, oh, here's the CEO. He's got five years' experience at a AAA games company as a product manager, right? Who are their developers? Oh, this guy's a software engineer. He's been a software engineer for four years this guy is a game developer he worked with riot games ea sports and uh rockstar right and so things like that start to paint a picture of okay this is this is a team that can deliver um which i think all just comes down to evaluating the project that's not to say that pavia won't uh create a create a metaverse or that they can't um right and whether they will or not like I won't speculate on that, but yeah, like they absolutely could. But if I was going to have to say, well, do I want the team from Cornucopias where I can look at all of their LinkedIn's and see the experience? Or do I want Pavia's team that has, uh, you know, Morgan with a monkey picture and uh, Paul, whose favorite video game is Grand Theft Auto. Well, I'm going to take the one with the LinkedIn's and the experience that I can verify. We've gone back to Doxon before. Is my mic working better now? Yes, that's now good. Do you know what? It's, it's something with Discord on the app on the Mac. It, just, it does all kinds of crazy things. Uh, we'll talk about Doxon before and like using Clays as an example. I don't think that's entirely a, a good reflection of kind of Doxon because Clays only docks once they realise they've got a successful project. You know, they, they're kind of well into it and they thought, yeah, we're making something of this. And I think. Teams will dox as soon as they realise they've got a success and a sustainable business, and that's probably why some people are holding off. I think Clay's fell into that as well. And a lot of the teams that we now trust started off undocked until they realised they've got something that's that's tangible uh, and to work with as well. And uh, one of the things I think in terms of a project, it's a little bit of a misunderstood concept of utility and advance as well, a community demanding utility. Sometimes I think that. Some some projects start off and they demand look. You know, they, they say they're going to have loads of utility and they push that out uh, massively towards the community and the community lap that up and go, yeah, utility's coming, it's coming, it's coming, it's coming, awesome, and they jump on board with it. But the sustainability of delivering such a high level of utility at the speed that the community demands is really pressurising, and I, I think that can put a lot of pressure on the, onto on on the teams as well. I like to see calm teams that that have got a plan, but it's not too not too jam-packed of like unachievables as well. A lot of the projects that we we invest in that are doing well, the top twenty projects, they've developed slowly and they've developed with that kind of momentum of success. Um, but there's, yeah, I don't know. And there's another thing that I'm thinking at the moment as well is that Discord. There's Beat Boys. I don't know if anyone's seen Beat Boys come out recently. They're pretty much all Twitter. Well, they have to all Twitter yeah. at the moment with their their things. <laughs> 
don't know, I'm kind of falling out of love a little bit. Discord's amazing. Like what we're doing now is amazing. And I absolutely love Discord for kind of building community along the world. But at the same time as well, I just think it builds a lot of unnecessary hype, a lot of unnecessary panic. And I know we need to, you know, the projects want to build that to kind of sell. But that it's 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 a double edged sword. And I think calmness strength in teams and I don't know, it's not so much rush is, is more healthier. Yeah, sorry, you, you look like you're trying to speak, Casey, but we're not hearing anything. He's joking on a, on a, on a plum. <laughs> yeah. I think ultimately what it really comes down to is hype versus value, right? Yeah. And where, if I'm holding this in my wallet in six months, 12 months, two years, five years, where is the value, right? Like, okay. it's, I see a lot of projects come out with a token. Right, I've seen projects come out with a token before they've minted their NFT, and it has no use. Why? Because it makes a lot of hype. Oh my gosh, they have this token. They've got to have plans for it. But it's really easy to make a token. Anyone can do it. Right? Really I can make really a button easy. token today. I could have you guys fault. claim it on Drip Drops as soon as as soon as it was done, and I made a token. But it's got no value at all. Right. And so it brings a lot of hype because it's an easy deliverable. But where's the value at? Yeah. Right. It's easy to say we're going to do X, Y and Z. But where's the value? How does that make this NFT worth something over the long haul? And that, that's what that's what it is. I mean, are you a, you've got to kind of think as a, as a purchaser, you're a flipper like someone that's buying in long term. Uh, since since I've started, my, my buying strategy has changed. It's less about minting now, and it's buying into projects that I like. And I like to get two of all the big projects that, that, that I like as well, so well-established. So I'm quite happy. I probably kind of take a rat approach to buying NFTs. I'll wait till they're matured a little bit, and then I'll buy in, and I'll just hold them. And I'm holding these for God knows how long. I'm not letting go, and I don't put any pressure on the team. I might even leave some of the discords because that's just their way baking. Um, and I think you need to decide as a... As a what you are uh and if you're someone that holds long term i think you're quite calm about that i think we get that in the rats quite a lot in terms of the rat, rat style we've got the the majority holders are quite happy with what we're doing they see them the kind of the, the developments that we're doing and we're hitting the benchmarks and they just leave it there they don't they don't come in the discard they don't talk it's just in the wallet they're leaving it there and they're going to see what happens with it but then you've got that kind of the, the frantic furious people that are constantly living in discard wanting new updates every few days uh, about something and you can deliver something that's pretty monumental like we've put a, a multi-sig wallet the first kind of multi-sig cnft wallet transferred all our assets nearly two million uh, worth of assets into a multi-sig wallet you talk about it and everyone's like meh what does that mean i mean it means it's fully decentralized now it fully belongs to the community that's pretty much a big deal for, for, for what we're doing now but you want something else um because you don't quite realize how long term this project is you want something short term and it's i think I don't know. I don't know. I think the more the, the more this industry or the more the more the space matures a little bit, I think maybe we'll see kind of a split in terms of long long term investors and those that are just kind of making these quick flips. But we're not that old, are we? We're probably less than that. properly. We're not even a year old in terms of like the the, the, the kind of mature community. Oh, I think we're losing you slightly there at the end. <laughs> right. But yeah, um, yeah. I mean, it's there's that the going on. I think there's a lot of there's a lot of feel basis, and I think like when you go into minting, you have to be prepared for the fact that a certain amount of whatever you mint will be rug pulls, yeah. and like it sucks. You can do all the research you want, everything like that. There will be there will be those that you're at the very least disappointed with, and that but that's something that you take the risk as part as part of being a minter. What do we think is more important, actually? Utility. I'm going to throw that word out. Utility in a project or a project that is safe and secure. Well, I think you. I have guess to it depends me. on what the. Yeah, what's the yeah. definition of safe and secure, I guess? Also, what's the well, definition of utility, right? Yeah, that too. No, yeah, like, that comes in many like, forms. 
like my you have an nft that gives you exclusive access to a discord channel like yeah that nft has utility the utility is it gives you exclusive access to a discord channel is that something that you want how valued is that discord channel who's in that discord channel right that's one of the reasons why board apes are as expensive as, as they are is because they're a huge community of creative minds and people want to be in that community right it gives you access to a community that has people like justin bieber and eminem and snoop dogg and that's something that people want right if i give you an nft that gives you exclusive access to uh to buttons discord and in it is you know me and and sin and mango bush and kc8 like yeah you might want to buy that but i don't think it's going to get the same value as a board ape right and so what about is it staking is it giving you you coins is it a financial asset what type of nft is it and what type of utility does it provide really right yeah, this is what I mean. I'm kind of asking the question a bit more deeply. What is utility exactly? When people are demanding it, you know, because you come out, we've got a project coming coming out at the end of the month. I don't know, I hit a shit lot. We've got a project, and all you're getting is people, what's the utility? What's the utility? And I keep asking, well, what is the utility that you want? We've just built a DAO, it's multi sig. We can do any utility we want, but I'm not going to satisfy you right now because we're doing this calmly and confidently and properly. But no one can answer the question what that utility is that they want. And I'm also working with another project that you're going to kind of see, see light soon, where you're going to have access to what you're talking about with Bordy Yacht Clubs, with kind of real stars inside the community, where the community interacting and kind of shaping what's going to be happening with that. But I still want to know, what the hell is utility? Well, I think there's another question to ask with that also, that I think I, I, I basically have seen happen pretty much in every Discord and every project that has quote unquote utility, regardless of what that is, whether it's a token or a private chat or, or whatever is, um, it's, it's never enough. First of all, most of the people don't even know what the utility is they want, like you're, like you're mentioning. Um, but even when that utility comes, the really the question is then well, what's the next utility? What's, what's the, what's the next one? This is great. This token is good. And we can do X, Y, and Z with it. But now, now, what? Why? Why can't we do more things with that token? And what other utility come with with this project? And you know, maybe the utility was it got you some sort of other art or NFT. And so, well, what's the utility with that new one then? So I think that what I've definitely seen a lot of is, you know, I think it probably makes it hard for some of these projects that even if they do come up with a good utility that a lot of people do like, it, it's, it seems to be in a lot of aspects somewhat short-lived. And I think it's the mindset and the nature of this space that, and really, I mean, society in general these days in terms of wanting everything right now and, and stuff is that they, there's always, they always want more utility. There's always something else. It needs to be constantly building, and that can I think that can that can be tough um, yeah. for a lot of projects or for really anything. I mean, I'm I'm going to kind of point out a project, Ball Club. I used to absolutely love Ball, but I do love Ball Club. I thought the art was absolutely outstanding when it first came out. Big hype train came out, phenomenal. It was different, it was original, it was great. But they then, if they would have just stuck with the art and stayed cool, I think they would have been all right. But they've kind of screwed themselves with the amount of utility that they kind of they brought out, they brought up down, they brought state, they all these different things, they brought these mutations. And the project has nosedived now because of that. They think they have to bring out these stuff. And I think really the best utility, the adoption of it, is kind of the early utility that was brought up. For example, with Clays, you buy part of the 10K, you're always whitelisted for the next part. But like Ugly Bros have done, nice and simple, you buy your part of that. So it becomes that like genesis at the first thing because a lot of utility that that, that that projects are building out it's just engagement it's not utility it's engagement that keeps you hooked mm -hmm. keeps you kind of grinding away in the discord so that you give your aid away straight you know all all the time and i, I just it's utility is getting described it's getting confused as engagement now like rabbits have got amazing engagement and ideas and, and things and i'm massively good because but when you have the drop in manchester where i live it wasn't far away, but I had COVID and couldn't get out of bed. I was ill. And I knew oh, exactly man. where they were. Oh, man, I'm still sick. <laughs> That's because, honestly, honestly, if I just I can get my ass out of bed. But I think, look, if, if you want to be safe in this space, you don't have to know what's actually useful for you as a project in terms of what do I get? Do I get equal access to something? Do I get straight access for the next thing? 
and what's just engagement that's just going to bleed me dry of it again uh, with that. And I think that's just when 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 people are asking what's utility, what the hell are you what are you hell are you asking for, and what benefit is that? Because like you said, if it's just a coin, we can make one at the end of this discard and drop it on all your wallets quite easily. What the hell are you going to do with that? I mean, a, a thing that I I want to say is that when if like you buy an NFT and its utility is that it can be used in a game, you're not buying an NFT, you're buying an in-game asset. Like yeah. unless it has a, a, another thing to do with it, because I think utility has to be multiple things, because otherwise you're just buying the thing it represents. Yeah, I think yeah. the project is still an absolutely amazing utility player mint. But they're, they're absolutely awesome. They're the utility that they want, but because it's so utility driven, that project going well, going under the radar a little bit. But they they are integrating into epic games. They're creating leaderboards for Fortnite with the with the founder passing, rewarding holders of their pass with their own native token PMX, which that token you'll be able to then buy from their own created NFT store. Amazing utility, but because it's not that sexy or that that hyper, and because they're stuck to their their, their white paper rigidly. The project kind of goes under under the radar a little bit. But going back to games design, a close friend of mine is actually a games designer. He's, he's, he's designed it, working for years on a cool game. And I tried to kind of educate him on, on the kind of NFTs and cryptos. But if you're a, you're a games designer and you're selling your assets as NFTs, you can't, Steam will ban you. So you can't any, earn any money through Steam, yeah. which, you know, Steam is a massive platform for, for doing that. So effectively, if a, if a game is asset-based, uh, and they deconstructed it in the NFTs. They're not owning from Steam, so they've almost. I think any game at the moment would prefer, unless it's like Corning Corpus, they're getting very big. I mean, they've been this for a long time. But any kind of small developing game would much rather be able to learn from Steam than NFTs at the moment because it's more secure and it's it's safer in terms of like tax and just yeah, onboarding. I mean, Steam is on sixty percent of computers worldwide and stuff. Like you can't not exactly. want to be on Steam. So my point is, if they're not on Steam, is that because they're a failed game in the real world and kind of you know, in life, real world? And so they're coming over here and think, right, we've got a failed project. Let's see if we can revive it on Web3. Yeah, I mean, a bunch of good points there. Like, you know, no, and, and again, it's knowing what you're buying, but it's also to, to know how to look for red flags and stuff as well. Like, you know, do a reverse image search. <laughs> see see what pops up as being, you know, related or could be similar or whatever. You know, and if, if, yeah. if, you, if, you, if you're buying, uh, you know, if you want to buy Ape Project number 76, then have a quick Google of Ape Projects and see if there's any projects that look this, look similar. Like, yeah, you know, we, we, we have a bunch of Ape Projects around, but at least they... You, you can tell the difference between them. Like, yeah, that's another thing too. If you reverse image search some of the uh, some certain projects, uh, like previews, you'll find them on yeah. Fiverr. Yeah. Right, and then you can usually it'll link to a listing, and you can see exactly what they paid for it and exactly what they were charged. <laughs> So yeah, I mean, but but again, I mean, like the, the the biggest thing with doing your own research is to is to value it enough to put the time into it. If you're going to spend, you know, a significant part of your um, entertainment budget on buying an NFT, then part of that entertainment is is doing the research into buying it in the first place and learning more about it and and everything like that. Like, you know, a, a, again, you're going to be looking for different reasons if you're flipping. But, you know, even then when you're flipping, you have to put the time into it. Like, you know, you might not care about an ADA mint, but, you know, when mints are at 100 ADA, 150 ADA, whatever, then, you know, don't don't blindly just think, well, it's minting and, you know, 2,000 other people have said that they might think about minting at some point in the future. Don't have that be enough to you know throw away a week's wages on nfts guys i'm back from dinner i just want to say that my my what i do with projects is i just wait for tools in to say hey holy buy this 
<laughs> yeah, um, I, I, that's something I need to make very clear. If, if, if I need to make this very clear, if you see me in a server, I, I'm in like every Discord server for calendar and everything like that. Don't take ever take my presence in a server as an indication that I'm minting because 99.9% yeah. of the time I'm not. I, I would say the, the same is true for me. Right. I I get messages about collaborations like probably four times a day, five times a day. People who want us to give away their whitelist spots, people who want us to to use rabbit traits, whatever. And so I join their server so I can look into what they're building and who they are and what they're doing. And the majority of the time, the answer is no, that's not something that we're interested in right now. And I'm in those servers, right? I'm in some servers for some not some projects that I would not touch with a 10 foot pole, not because I'm interested in them, but because one, you got to do your own research to find out if they're worth touching with a 10 foot pole. And two, because a lot of times they ask the partner or I need to look into them for some reason related to, you know, what I do. And so don't take someone's presence uh, of being at a place as like, oh, this is safe, right? Yeah. Uh, it's, it's especially very easy if it's to only one safe. or two. If it if it's like one or two people that you recognize, you can discount that. But if there's like forty names that you recognize as OG community members, then that's worth taking notes of. But like yeah. one or two, uh, is you know, not. Yeah. Yeah, we do, we I, do I that a lot that. too. You know, we'll I, we'll join discords to help with the bots or to pull yeah. information for a project, or I'll I'll join them just out of interest, not to really admit, just curious about what's going on. So, you know, that's a really good point. I'm in sixty or seventy discords, but you know, only a portion of them are actually something I'm actively involved with. Right? That's a good point yeah. you guys bring up. A great example of this, actually, and uh, I don't know the details around what happened. Right. But bright pals. Right. I was like, oh, I feel comfortable here because Jub from Happy Hoppers is a mod. And I minted and, you know, they obviously had their own kind of happenings and whatnot after the mint. Uh, but I felt very comfortable there because the founder of Happy Hoppers was on the mod team. And I was like, OK, well, he wouldn't mod if, uh, you know, if he didn't believe in the project. And. That wasn't the case at all. I talked to him and they were like, hey, uh, he's basically like, yeah, they asked me to do it last minute because they were shorthanded and like they offered to pay me or I don't remember the exact details of it, but he wasn't like supporting the project or anything like that. He was just there. And right. Like I saw that as a sign of safety and it's not right. And that's a lesson that I had to learn. Uh, you know, thankfully it, it wasn't too hard of a lesson for me, but like, yeah, don't take somebody's presence there as this project is safe. Yeah. I mean, again, it's, it's, it's reading the flows. Like, you know, we, we, especially with like OG people, they, they, they could be in on, you know, on the server, but are they interacting on the server is, is, is as much of a question as, as to presence. Because if they're interacting on the server, then they actually give a shit. Like, you know, it's 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 easy for me to be in 200 Discord servers all the time, but I only chat in half a dozen, dozen or so on a regular basis. So yeah, you, I don't you know, know the ones that I'm the ones that I'm chatting in and sh and sharing stories about my life. Th those are the ones that I'm interested. In. The ones where I'm just sat there and I, and I've never said a word other than hello. Then probably not so much. But yeah, you, and you, I would you echo can look up day. people's message histories as well. So you know, yeah, if you, that's if you, another if you thing. See, you know, goat nasty there. It's like, well, you know what, like. I'm not going to take his, his presence as being proof of that, that he likes the project. Let's have a quick look and see what he said in the past about the project. Because he's either said, A, nothing, or B, he's like, yeah, I really like this project, really like these guys. And, you know, you have to take that with a pinch of salt. 
But if there's like 10 pages of him saying, yeah, so, you know, really looking forward to the Mint, you know, I've been I've been getting everything set up and like, you know, I've, I've moved ADA around and, you know, I've put the day off work so I can mint this, then it's probably a sign that he's invested in the project. You know, that, that's a good point to like um, I, the thing I was mentioning, uh, I guess, 20 or 30 minutes ago when I was uh, being long winded is when, when I'm doing that in-depth research. Right. A lot of people will just, you know, I look at their all their social channels, whatever they are. But, you know, I'm, I might find uh, Faha or, or you or, or somebody, you know, well known. And, and I'll start I'll, I'll, maybe I'll take the discord page and uh, discord channel and I'll search their name and see what they're, t- you know, what they're saying or you know if they're communicating you know that's an easy way to see or i'll look at their twitter page or or, or something like that right or maybe twitter spaces or something but you know don't just stop at looking at websites of discord find you know get a little more granular dig in a little more right yeah again it's about it's about putting the time into it to doing it well rather than the half assing it couple of things just listening as well that, that you can do to help is to familiarize yourself with open cnt and volume trades and the amount of assets are being sold yeah. how many of the nfts are actually on the market as well so that's quite kind of a healthy sign sometimes the floor price can, floor price can be quite low but if there's only two percent or not even you know, less than two percent on the market that's still pretty healthy because 98 percent of people are still holding it's just there's no sales movement so people keep dropping lower and lower um i think a higher price and even if it's above the floor price, but there's maybe 30, 20, 30 percent of the collection listed, that for me is a bit worried, worrying because of that 20, 30 percent that are listed, they're going to start coming lower and lower soon. And then once they come lower, it's going to be so hard to get back over that peak. This is the number on there. So the amount of um, assets listed, they're the kind of thing. So familiar, so familiarize yourself with uh, open CNFT um, and look at the data such as volume trades and the amount of assets that are being sold daily sometimes i use that if i'm after a quick flip sometimes i'll just jump on a project that's selling a selling a huge amount and jump back off again uh, quite soon just for the thrill <laughs> i might only make 30 either but i just like the buzz of it yeah i mean you know for for, for people that are comfortable surfing around different websites uh cardano scan is a very useful website um yeah. you know you can, you can put in all sorts of wallet addresses and everything like that but you know you can take the policy id of whatever project is minting and you can just plug it into cardano scan on the, on the front page and it'll tell you exactly how many of that project has been minted to to, to that moment so you know you can use that to, 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 to gauge how fast things are selling 100 percent like if you see something that's minted there's only 200 out of 5,000 sold after about four to a couple of hours you're probably gonna have to wait you know probably give that one a miss so yeah. that's probably one of the first things you want to check but then again if it's a mint that's popular you do that you've already lost your turn yeah but you know it's it's for, for for those mints that don't sell out in 10 seconds but will sell out over like you know a couple of days perhaps or or, or yeah. even a couple of hours like you know if if, if you're paying attention you can be like, well, okay, I'm going to take, I'm going to take the risk of missing out completely, but you know, I'm going to look, you know, 20 minutes after mint and see, you know, are they 50% sold out? Are they 70% sold out? You know, and if they, if it's obvious that they're going to, they're going to reach the mark, then you know, it's still something that you could possibly flip, but you know, there's going to be a waiting time on that. So instead, instead of being able to flip, like you know, within 24 hours, it might be that you're going to be flipping. You know, it's three weeks later, for instance. Yeah, 100%. That's a good point. That's a good point you guys are bringing up. You know, that's another metric to look at, right? Like you guys are saying, using uh, JPG to look at, you know, how often they're selling. Not really necessarily to to know if you'll be able to flip or bring your money back, but just to see the activity in the project. Or, you know, you can look at, you know, like you guys are, like Tool, you mentioned Cardano Scan and, and, uh, you know, you can also look at, you know, the amount of holders, right? Is it, uh, you know, just for, you know, just for the sake of numbers and being kind of drastic to prove to make the point, you know, are there five holders or 5,000 holders, right? Yeah. And, and that information yeah, is best gained on opencnft.io, by the way, everyone. Um, that, that there will be improvements to tools coming in, in, in the future, but for, for now, they're, they're the place to go. 
Uh, one of the good things. And, and I, the reason and I also why... think a lot of people are like use CNFT Jungle for that right now too. But um, I don't know if y'all are aware, but I don't know if they've resolved it actually. But over the last few days, I think they've had uh, some discrepancies on that. So if y'all are using that, maybe, maybe it's okay now. But uh, just for awareness, you could do it on there too. But yeah. Jungle sucks. No, um, <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, I, I don't comment on jungle for, for, for obvious reasons. They're like Some of the stuff that they're trying to do over there is really fucking cool, for the record. Some of the stuff they're trying to do is really fucking cool. Um, but, you know, it, it's, it's also important for rarities and for information in general that there's as many places as possible for, for, to get that. And we're all going to have slightly different ways of doing things and products that we ship very and different. everything like that. So, you know... Like, very very well, no, they're, they're, they're doing good work. Obviously, you know, I, I, I'm heavily biased towards tools. Um, and, no, yeah. you know, there's there, there's things that I don't like about Jungle. But, you know, that's that's going to be the same with every website and, and everything. So it is what it is. No, they did some cool things with Yummy. The, the yummy, yummy, yummy Rewards for buying Yummy was absolutely superb. Going back to doing some research before as well, one of the pitfalls you've got to look out for, so Block Owls. I love Block Owls, so no foot enhanced Black Owls because they're, they're amazing. But you will see that their price, their floor price is going up quite heavily at the moment. But that's because they've got a whitelist miss, mint coming up soon. So yeah. everybody in their community is delisting to be available for that whitelist. So that's driving the floor price up. So if you're kind of inexperienced, you might think, oh, great. Block owls and mooning, the not. Uh, there are there is some natural, you know, incidental purchases are going on because people are seeing that they they're the going up. But it's it's manufactured because people are taking the um um yeah, the people are the buying market. the short term utility and are then happy to sell it again afterwards. Yeah, uh, um, like, you know, because they they if they're buying it for a hundred now to get the white list. Well, you know, the white the whitelist mint, they think, well, you know, I might be able to make 100 ADA on that. So I'll just buy this for 100 ADA, sell it at 80 and not care. And I've still made like, you know, I've still made 80 on the other one instead of 100. Yeah, but the, but the floor is only fit thin because the owners are taking yeah. it off the, themselves being available for the, the block owls. And as soon as they get that whitelist and they mint it, they're going to go back on the market again. Yeah. So, it's you've got to look at volume sales rather than just floor price as well. Don't just look at the floor price and think that's high. What are the reasons behind it? Is, is the volume sales kind of backing up and driving that? So you see like columns going up. That's pretty natural. That's volume sales that they're going up. There's no other reason for that. But when you'll see the price of cons go up even more when the, the magic cons get minted because people will be taking them off as well. But you sure as hell, once the magic cons are gone, uh, are in, there'll be a massive dump again. Yeah. You've got to be you've got to be aware of those kind of market situations as well with projects um, rather than just seeing those kind of basic parameters. I mean, here's an interesting question. How much time should you spend looking into a project? And, and again, this is going to be different for people at different um, buying power levels. Um, but, you know, if, if you're, if you're looking at minting, you know, sort of like, four or five projects in a month like you know sh should you be spending at least an hour or should you should you be spending at least like six hours doing like proper research like assuming that that I, money that that ada is valuable to you and you know you actually give a shit about whatever you're buying into i think it depends right some projects definitely make it easier than others right and it also depends on what you're looking for right? Sometimes all the information is present and it's very quick, right? What's the roadmap? What are they building? Who is the team? What are they doing? Uh, what is the price? Uh, what's the total cost of the mint, right? How much money are they having uh, at the end of it? Because, you know, if you tell me you're building a metaverse game, right, that's going to take millions of dollars and your entire mint is going to raise 200,000 ADA, like, how are you going to build a metaverse with a hundred grand, right? Like, how does that work? Um, and so it's, I think really what it comes down to is how thorough is your tolerance level, right? How sure of all these things do you need to be, right? So is a, you know, a picture and a paragraph bio and discord enough for you? Or are you going to reverse image 
image search those pictures of them to make sure they're not off of some stock website? Uh, are you going to Google those people's names, find their LinkedIn's, find their Facebooks, make sure they are who they say they are? Uh, or are they, you know, stealing their friend from high school's picture so that they don't get in trouble for what they're doing? Um, right? Where, you know, what, uh, how long does the team take back to respond to me when I have a question, right? It, you know, if you're only putting an hour into research and you ask a question and they don't get back to you in that hour and you say, all right, I'm done, I'm out of this project, and you leave the Discord, well, there you go. You're probably never going to get the answer to that question but are is that something that you really want are you going to stick around and wait uh for a team member to get back to you so hey, I'm, oh go ahead. i'm going to say something yeah good points but really good points um but i'll tell you one way is a good way to how you do your research on the projects and probably tools and probably to the value i'm going to say it but to be in part of the cnft tools discord for reason you know i know for a fact when when tool is going to interview a project or an amen here he does his research that's why he's in there and he's not going to put any projects on here that are massive massive the flag and what else do i wow like? <laughs> well projects, um you know? it's uh, it's, yeah, it's know, always best to, to to watch the ama because there's definitely AMAs that have come out well, and there's definitely AMAs where projects have come out, at least in my opinion, not quite as well. Yeah. But I, I know from doing AMAs myself, whether it's been on here, when I, when I helped you guys, I'm doing them on the rats, because we do it. I start getting bullish about projects once I've met the, met, met the, the makers, <laughs> met the, the developers, yeah. heard the kind of vision from them, their inspiration, where they come from, um, you know, and who they are as people, as, as much as anything. I think if you really, really want to do your own research, let guys like Tools and Scene of Tools do it for you and get, you know, attend those AMAs when they're on. If you're, most of the projects now are going to be Scene of Tools and if you're doing any AMA, or if you are part of that community, get them to do an AMA, push them, do an yeah. AMA, we want to know whether it's on their Discord or some, somewhere else, but you get a hell of a good feeling. I, I baked into the cozies because I never really paid much attention to them. But when we had them on, because we were buying loads of them through the DAO, but with the project on, we had the, the community on, I was blown away by the level of depth of that, that project. I was, it's absolutely insane. I'm not shilling it here. It's just genuinely an awesome project with a brilliant team behind it. But you've got to be careful about doing your research. You do too much, you end up spending far too much either. But they're decent projects. Yeah, I mean, it's it's also important to, to, to be aware that we're, you know, essentially NFTs are a high-risk asset within a high-risk asset class. Like, you know, that there, there, there is no safe investment in an NFT. That's, you know, it's... While, while, while we think it's very unlikely, Cardano could be turned off tomorrow. The, the US government, the, you know, the, the Euros and the Brits and China could all say, you know what, fuck crypto. We're not dealing with it anymore. I'm just making it illegal everywhere. Yeah. And while, yeah, there's a low risk of that, there is still a risk of that, and that has to be factored into every single purchase that you make. Yeah, we're leveraging against an already leveraged asset. We're leveraging crypto yeah. against fiat. <laughs> yeah, uh, I mean, it, 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 in a sense, there's a, lot of si there's a lot of similarities in structure, in in in, in well, sorry in the risk profile of the cdos that caused the housing market crash in 2008 like the the, the level that's... of fuckery going on to to create stuff and <laughs> market it and hype it and I, I think one of the one of the things that i kind of pushed along like to our community is the fact that because we're purchasing project we purchase um, assets we've got loads of experts within our, our discord that know projects and know them intensely and so when we do purchases we are really kind of uh <coughs> research it a hell of a lot you know within the right style and also when we've got proposals coming through they're researched massively so if any project comes through and puts a proposal into into the dell there's huge discussions and even the vote off the back of it whilst the negative vote's not a reflection of the the project itself discussions that take place give you so much information again i've eaten into projects that have failed proposals because i've been so impressed with the community the dedication of the community that just because they don't pass a proposal within a DAO 
doesn't mean they're not, they're not a stand-up project uh, themselves. But I am a big fan of that kind of weather, whatever Dell, but being part of some sort of um, community, purchasing community, is a great way to learn and be exposed to kind of expertise and um, learn from it as well. And I think we're also quite privileged as project kind of leaders at the South Button and, and, and others because we get um, a lot of intel quite early from projects that want to collaborate um, a lot. And so you can kind of then do, you know, do due diligence there. You get to know the project teams as well. So I've been fortunate enough to learn about a number of good projects because of that uh, as well. So if you're part of those communities, sometimes if they've got whitelists on there, because... Yeah, we've kind of done our research. By no way, I'm not going to put in a project that I think is high risk in our, our, our Discord. Yeah, I mean, again, it, like, it, the, the you know, thought it, that popped into my mind that I wanted to put out there is that on at least three different occasions in the last, like, four days, I've been messaged by um, representatives of teams that populate Discord servers. And it's not a case of, you know, having bots in your server. It's a team of having 10 people having full-on discussions 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Taking in, it's uh, 10, 10, 10, 10, people, three, 10 people with three shifts with uh, split, uh, sorry, 30 people split into 10 shifts per day. Sorry, three shifts per day. So those, those right, services are more. going around. So, so you really have to pay attention to the community to, to, to really figure out what's going on like you know obviously big communities that's going to be less of a problem but with smaller communities that are starting up it's 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 a service that's being provided that you know it, it's worth remembering it, it exists i've got going out because i've got my own spaces on twitter so sorry <laughs> Hi. well glad to have you coming on you, huh? you got a twitter space mango Twitch space, there you go, 10 o'clock. Yeah, he, um, Mango does the uh, rat style spaces. Oh, nice. I did not know that. <coughs> yeah, okay, so that's why I mentioned it's not just a bumble. Get paid for it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's well, I gotta go, buddy. Nice to see you. Take care. Yeah, see you soon, dude. In a bit. Yeah, yeah. later, Mango. So, <coughs> so yeah don't, don't forget everyone if you've got questions put, uh, put your hand up to come up on voice or stick them into nft chat um i think uh, crypto mark has made his way to the top to say hello yeah thanks for remembering um appreciate that um so i don't want to put any any names for projects out there but one thing i thought i'd bring up is i see some projects with like uh, example, a Twitter following of uh, 4,000, but their Discord's got like 20,000. So I don't know how to identify whether or not something's a bot, you know, a real person or, you know, how, how alarming that should or should not be. So that should definitely be alarming, <coughs> right? If they have 4,000 on Twitter and 20,000 in Discord, it's okay for there to be a discrepancy, right? Like rabbits had a discrepancy for a long time. They're, they're very different communities. Primarily. They're very different communities, yeah. Twitter and Discord. Yeah, we were focused very heavily on Discord because the way that our community is designed, we're running games and we're doing things. And, uh, you know, you can't, like, you're not going to run trivia on Twitter, right? It doesn't make sense. Discord's a better platform mm -hmm. for the way that we were building community. Um, but if there's a huge discrepancy, like you have 4,000 Twitter followers, and 20,000 Discord members, I would venture to bet that a lot of them are bots. And so one of the easiest things is, especially with Discords of that size, look at how many members are online. Um, I've seen tons of Discord servers uh, where it's got 20,000 people and there are 500 people online. And that was one of the things that really frustrated me uh, leading up to the Mint of Dead Rabbits is because I'd go in Twitter spaces and I'd talk to people and they'd be like, oh, your community's too small. You only have 2,000 members on Twitter. And I'd be like, yeah, but this project that is four times the size of us has less members online, right? Like, yeah, we have 3,000 Discord members. And compared to a project that has 12K, 
not a lot, right? You'd say, wow, you have a fourth of their community size. But then when you look at the online members, you get a more accurate picture of how many people are actually there, right? Uh, at the very least. And so, uh, I'd say, I would it say it kind of matches the number. Twitter following. When, when I go in there, it's probably, well, active, probably like 12 to 2,400, I think, at a time. Matches more. Yeah, I mean, like, you know, a, a 10 a percent ratio of online to um, actual members of the community would usually suggest to me that there's an element of bots involved or, or an invite competition where everyone had to invite like 25 people so everyone started making accounts. Um, yeah. It's, it, like, and it's as, not far just as, as far as researching Twitter goes, you have to take a very different attitude towards Twitter. Because you can have all the followers in the world on Twitter, uh, that whether bought or real or organic, but it's about the interaction that the, that the accounts that the tweet provides. So if you're looking at a project, you know that could be on Twitter, they might have they might have ten thousand followers, but if they've only got like three people liking their tweets and like one person commenting, and you know, well, those those tweets aren't going anywhere. Just that's it. They're not yeah. going anywhere. Yeah, right. exactly that. And I would say, look at Twitter ratio. That's another thing is we found. We had, at the time, it was uh, very shortly after Mint, like maybe three or 4,000 followers. And our engagement was insane compared to projects that had double or triple the number of followers we had because we didn't do it right. So there's... Uh, there's things that projects do to grow the size of their communities uh, that work in, in moderation, right? Like giveaways, for example, right? You do a couple of giveaways, that's great, right? You're giving people incentive to join, people get to check out your project, they get some exposure. But if you're only doing, if you're doing giveaways every other day and you're giving away 100 things, you get a lot of fake accounts of people who are only there for a giveaway. Yeah. Right. They have no interest in your mm -hmm. project, but I can get free stuff by being here and by following you. And so that's what I'm going to do. And then you see when they have a Twitter post that's not a giveaway and there isn't anything, it's dead. Right. Yeah. Nobody likes it. Nobody retweets it. Why? Because the only thing that half those accounts are doing is retweeting so that they can get a giveaway. And most of the time they're not even retweeting to anyone. They're, yeah. they're retweeting to, to seven accounts that also just retweet things to get given away so that they can have the most likely scenario of winning this free NFT. Uh, yeah, so it's... that's how you do it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's, it's one of those things, and especially where it's very easy. So, it, yeah, I mean, kind of alpha, kind of not. Um, but when a Twitter account buys followers, that does not increase engagement in any kind of single verifiable way. Twitter knows about these um, likes and everything like that, and they just don't. You know, they 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 know that they know that you bought ten thousand followers from from whatever service was providing it. Doesn't really matter to them, and it. Like that, because engagement is driven off. Like when you post a tweet, if your initial engagement is high, like the first, let's say the first hundred people that Twitter shows the tweet to, if fifty people like it, ten people retweet it, and one person comments, then it's going to be spread out to a lot more people. If one person likes it, well, it's like, well, you know what, you know, we, we've shown this to the hundred people most likely to like this content. And if they don't like it, well, we're just going to kill it dead because nobody gives a fuck. So it has to be, you know, when you're doing, you know, tweets, it has to be highly engaging with the first people that see it. Because if the first people that see it don't like it, don't retweet it, or even see it, or even see it in the first place, then they don't give a shit. It's just killed dead. So when you see uh, Twitter accounts with 10,000 followers and like three likes and retweets and anything that isn't a competition, they'll be lucky if their tweets are even reaching 150 people over the, over the lifetime of their tweets. 
and none of those people will be interested because the only people that will be interested will be the people in the giveaways and it's not a giveaway so they don't like it so yeah that's <laughs> a highly technical <laughs> assessment of how Twitter does things but yeah at, le at least that's how it's felt to me running different Twitter accounts over the years Oh, awkward silence. <laughs> but yeah, it's it's like 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 we said, tw Twitter's a very different beast to Discord, and you kind of have to look at Twitter. I mean, I don't personally value Twitter engagement as much as I do Discord engagement, because Discord engagement is generally on a highly personal level and will be daily, if not hourly, you know, and people literally sitting in sitting in a server for three hours a day sharing their life that's that's a very different engagement prospect to you know somebody liking and retweeting a tweet agreed and, and another thing to remember is twitter is an open platform right like you put things on twitter so people can find you and come to your discord usually yeah. right because you can get a different level of engagement Right, you can do more things in Discord. You can play games. You can run contests. You can, uh, you know, get in voice chats. You can do very little of those things on Twitter, uh, at least not as efficiently. Right, like I'm sure I could run trivia on Twitter, but it probably wouldn't go very well, uh, as opposed to Discord, where everybody can type at the same time, and uh, you know, it just works better. And so. Yeah, you have to kind of look at what each platform is used for and why, right? And there's tons of projects that don't even have Discord. They only have Twitter, right? Like, I think someone uh, was saying about, I think it's Beat Boys, where they're primarily Twitter-focused. I know, like, D-Bag MFers don't have a Discord at all, um, right? Like, there's not every project needs a Discord, depending on what you're doing. Uh, although I would say it is nice uh, to have a Discord. Um, but you, you really got to look at each scenario kind of on its own. Yeah. I mean, it's, it, it's a great game of feels and weighing up and, you know, I don't want to say gambling, but it, a lot of people are gambling when they press the mint button. It is what it is. Um, So, you know, sometimes they'll they'll mint and they'll they'll lose half their ADA. Other times they'll double it. It's you know. <coughs> yeah, I mean, is there anything you know, any other tips and tricks that you guys have when you're looking at different stuff, or any other questions from the audience for that matter, either in uh, NFT chat or uh, stick your hand up for voice. Here we go. We have um, eBay KC, who is the project leader for the Ghost Chain NFT Club, I think it is. Just requesting to come on. Seems a little quiet now, though. <laughs> Nothing wrong with awkward silence, bro. I live for the silence. <laughs> yeah, I there, with there, kids. there is quite a lot of pressure to to uh, to, to to have uh, things going on all the time, isn't there? <laughs> yeah, people get really nervous when no one's talking and they don't know what to do, and so they're like, "Oh my god!" I, uh, uh, but I don't know if. It is what it is. I mean, I guess it's different, <coughs> right? Like, we have people listening to us who are like, they probably want us to be talking because that's why they're here is to listen to us talk. <laughs> uh, we're not just, like, having a conversation with, like, one person. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's 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 kind of a thing to bring up, though, when you're researching projects that have been around a while, is that, you know, communities bed in and they get to know each other and they feel comfortable with each other. 
and you know so, sometimes that means they talk more sometimes it means they talk less as they're off doing other things and you know that especially with product with long development cycles you know they, those people are you know they're going to be off doing things not going to sit there for the entire year focused on one project so that there is always going to be ebb and flow you know with projects that are loved but you know maybe on the back burner for for six months while while they get their shit together yeah absolutely and i think you have to remember right like everyone only has 24 hours in the day there's a lot going on in the space right like yeah. i hold i don't know probably 50 different projects <laughs> I'm not active in all of them, right? Not because I don't want to be, right? Not because I don't believe in those communities. I bought their NFTs for a reason. But, you know, I just don't have time to sit in Discord and talk and, right, hang out and to participate with everything that every NFT project is doing. Yeah, I mean, it's, yeah. <laughs> but... It, it does seem like we're starting to run out of questions. Uh, I know eBay is trying to get his uh, audio fixed, I think is the problem. Um, but yeah, we, we, we do seem to be losing a little momentum. So, uh, I mean, we, we don't offer, well, we that there isn't often these uh, open AMAs where you can come and uh, ask people uh, all sorts of different questions about stuff. So... Uh, Feel free to take advantage while they last, or while this lasts. Yeah, I'm happy to answer any questions. I'm sure the rest of the panel would echo echo that sentiment. <coughs> but I would I would ask you, um, what do you guys have going on lately, re recently, other than the the um, the real life uh, hunt, if you will. Oh, man, we have a lot. So uh, I won't shill too, too hard. But uh, so the node keys, right, that's uh, level one of our event called the dead event. And so once all the node keys are unlocked, we have level two, which is going to be all online, actually, which will be really great for some of the people who didn't get to participate in level one uh, dead boxes. Uh, at the end of July, we have Day of the Rabbit Supreme, which is what I'm probably most excited about, uh, to be honest with you. Um, so we have 6,666 rabbits on our main policy. We're going to burn 666 of them, and we're going to get these Rabbit Supremes. Uh, there's going to be 333 Rabbit Supremes. And so Rabbit Supremes will have uh their own unique traits some of the rarer traits from the collection that people really love uh and they're gonna have some of their own unique utility and some really really awesome art uh that we're really excited and so to get a ticket to the day of the rabbit supreme uh you can win it either through the dead event finding a node key or through uh some other community events that we're running right now we're running it's called the juman and nance some of the where basically you pick a um an order based on one of the alien rabbit gods and then if you your order uh wins the competition uh then the participating members of that order get entered into a lotto for tickets uh we have some other like challenges and stuff coming uh for those like we do if we give away node keys to people who are uh, tickets to people who like retweet the uh um like the node key tweets and and things like that and so uh i'm really excited for day of the rabbit supreme and i'm really excited for level two dead boxes <laughs> uh sorry just uh shadow hawks uh popped up with the uh, a question about um dyor stuff i'm, I'm guessing what's up shadow hawk Nice rabbit in the profile picture there. You're muted, bro, if you are unaware. Yeah, and it's it's a self-mute. I can't unmute any more than I have. <laughs> I do that so often. I don't know how many times I join my personal Discord with my IRL friends to, like, play games or something, and I'm sitting there talking for, like, five minutes, 
and they'll be like, "Hey, we can't hear you if you're uh, if you're saying anything." You see, I, I, my, yeah, the, I the, the reason that causes it for me every single damn time is because my webcam's plugged in. Uh, <laughs> for <laughs> just me, causes it's a conflict. usually for me it's because either like my microphone is on the side of my headset, and if I move it up. It, so it's like not sticking straight out it will mute or i'll have hit mute on my computer uh from like a different voice chat that i ended up yeah. leaving and then i'll <laughs> join again and not realize i'm muted <laughs> oh. yeah i did a i did my first twi twitter space um a couple weeks ago that i hosted for panda society and i um did a whole intro spiel for like five minutes and realized when i looked at my phone that i had been muted the entire time and so no one heard anything or knew I was even saying anything. So uh, I've definitely done that a bunch of times. Yeah. Um, e B A Y S K C. What's yes. Up, bro? Um, interesting project he's he's doing actually. But yeah, um, welcome to uh, the chat, Eva. Can you guys hear me? Oh yeah, very well. Yep. Oh man, I'm sorry about that. My I don't know what's what's going on with my phone. Um, I had to connect with my my computer, uh, you know, to, to be able to speak. But um, yeah, I just actually just got back from the consensus event um, in Austin. Uh, literally just arrived, like, back came back home like a few few minutes ago, uh, like thirty minutes ago. But um, just I guess to add to the contribution, like to contribute to what everyone is saying about doing your research. Um, on projects, um, obviously one of the best ways would be to like look at a team, uh, look at the team, um, you know, like look at what they do, not what they say. Um, a lot of a lot of projects they have, you go to their website, they have all this, you know, what what I would call like unrealistic, um, I guess, uh, unrealistic roadmap. Um, but if they have those things and they're showing progress that they're actually doing those things, a good example would be. Um, I guess the folks from Ada Ninjas, um, they, they're doing a great job. Like you see them releasing like previews of their games and, um, you know, stuff like that gives you like a sense that, okay, these people, they really mean business. So again, looking at what they do, right. And, 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 uh, and not what just what they say, I think is a cool part, you know, when doing your research for projects. Um, and another thing when it comes to doing my research. I actually go to the website and I actually go to the communities and actually see how active they are. Um, like, I think someone made a point about like how fast they respond to questions. And um, not only that, but I also try to, for example, if they have a product, like actually go and try to explore um, the product. Um, a good example of that would be if they say they have this metaverse, you know, thing going, um, I always try to like connect my wallet, you know, and see actually, you know, how, f how far they've gone in terms of, um, the metaverse, um, implementation and stuff like that. Um, a, a let us example of that would be, I guess the folks from, I think V blocks are doing a very good job of metaverse type stuff, um, local homes, NFT. So going there and actually seeing them make progress and actually walking around the metaverse, uh, that's, you know, obviously that's a very good sign that, okay, these people actually mean business. So um, yeah, uh, just I just wanted to add that uh, to the to the uh, to the discussion, um, but uh, yeah, um, happy to continue uh, contributing. Yeah, I mean, like you know, it's 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 important that people get the information that they need, and uh, some sometimes they need to be told. Well, it's not that they need to be told, but they need to discover that the information that they need, what the information that they need actually is to make a decision. Like, right you know it's we're, we're all used to the, do your own research and then well that doesn't really help does it right uh, uh yeah it seems like everybody uh most people i at least um they're kind of looking for that you know next big thing and um nfts right now um <laughs> kind of like maybe a gamble in a lot of ways <laughs> trying to miss that next this next that next big thing but um yeah it always pays to do your, your research study the team and uh uh yeah maybe check them out see if they actually are real people <laughs> you know I, I know most people don't like to dox themselves but um maybe try to do some research on their background see you know if they um 
you know, I have a LinkedIn account. Like for example, I have a LinkedIn account, a quick search, you know, you can find that I actually am the SEM manager at BitMart Exchange. Um, doesn't take that much work to do research, but uh, yeah, definitely pays to do that. Yeah, I mean, I'm 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 on more I'm generally on the more relaxed side of doxing. Um, it's something that I like when I see, but at the same time, I don't know. It's like if a project's doxed and they're run up with all your money, then well, okay, you've got a name and address, but that doesn't really give you much, many avenues legally or anything like that. <coughs> The other, you know, the other thing is, what am I going to do? Am I going to sue them over the 80, 80 ADA I spent on the mint? Like, you know, it's it's like one of those. You can report them <coughs> if they broke any laws. Although, I think, I don't know. Uh, I have to do more research, so I won't talk on the legality of rug pulling. Um. Yeah, I don't I mean, think it's legal. But. but but again, like you know, it, you would need a certain amount of attention by some whatever authority happens to be liable. Like you know, you know, for an, an, a UK guy, am I gonna go? How am I gonna go about suing somebody in the US or the Philippines or China or you know Africa or you know the <coughs> there's there's significant barriers to anything whatsoever happening, even even with their with their name and address. Agreed wholeheartedly. Yeah, it's uh, <coughs> yeah. What avenues of repercussion do you actually have? Yeah. So you know, doc doxing it's 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 nice to see, but. I don't give it as much weight in my decisions on on an NFT than maybe some others would. Um, but again, it's it's it, everything like all all the red flags and everything like that is just a gradient. So it might be that you you fancy a, a super high risk. Well, you know, this is either going to be you know the biggest rug pull ever, or or it's going to ten x. So you might, you know, you might be willing to say, well, you know, if the upside's that much, I'll take more of a gamble on losing more, if that makes sense. But, you know, if, if, if the upside has the potential to be bigger than the downside, then some people will invest and they'll mint. It might be that they expect to lose everything 50% of the time, but then 10% of the time it will go to 20x. So they mint on that basis as opposed to, you know, whether it's 100% guaranteed to be a long-term investment for them. And it's important to understand that, you know, people have different risk tolerances. So, and, and they'll mean for different reasons. Um, but yeah, yeah, like... Yeah, well, I was going to actually mention that when you were... When you were saying that, you know, the, the risk, you know, before you mentioned risk tolerance, that's actually what came to my mind. And you mentioned it earlier, you know, and, and to each his own. And, and like like you and Button were talking about earlier, it's what as an individual you are willing to accept for that risk tolerance, you know. But, you know, similar with me, though, you know, kind of the same. I, you know, if if the if the team is bad at conducting AMAs just because maybe they're not good at um, public speaking or um or or you know maybe they're just not good at you know managing a twitter or, or something like that right that's why you know you you look at all those other things to you know build that picture because you know maybe from that individual's risk tolerance you could say you know maybe because i don't know who they are but they're really good at speaking and they have all these other things they're really good at communicating and so forth maybe that's okay or maybe because maybe they aren't good at those things but they are doxed you know to whatever you consider doxed you know maybe that's okay right but to, you know to your point you know it's a that risk tolerance but taking all of that information into consideration yeah and you know it's again it, it's about knowing what you want to get into do, do you want one that is you know 
never going to drop below floor price and you know maybe make 1080a in in a year's time then you know you're going to have a very different you, you're going to need to look at projects in a very different way than to somebody that's like you know i'm either going to go to the moon or i'm going to lose everything um i mean a, a, another I'm... thing to to consider that isn't much so much that isn't discussed so much is if you're flipping what kind of bankroll you need to do that um because there's a lot of mints that 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 don't go the way that you want them to so you know having a bankroll that can support you know you, you need you need to be able to lose to be able to win yeah, I you know there, that that's what exactly what I do when I'm minting a project or investing in whatever it is, right? Out, even outside of NFTs, you know, I, okay, I spent this amount of whatever monetary asset I'm spending. Am I okay if I go to sleep tonight and I I never see that again, right? Maybe it'll hurt. Maybe I won't be happy about it, but you know, am I going to be okay, right? Yeah, I mean, like, you know, you should never be in a position where, you know, the rent payment is determined by whether a floor holds or not. Which, you know, yeah. and, and yeah. unfortunately, yeah. Too, too, many min, too many minters fall into that category. But, yeah. But, yeah, that, that got a bit of a response. <laughs> <laughs> I but, mean, yeah. The... Oh, go on. I, I, I was just going to say, like, uh, when it comes to just, like, selecting NFT projects, and usually, me personally, I mean, like most people, like, you try to kind of, like, diversify and, you know, mint a few of, of, of different projects. But lately, I've been kind of doubling down on my high conviction projects um and just like letting go of the of the ones where maybe i thought it was going to be this thing and it, it ends up not being that i just want to like kind of liquidate those and just like really double down on the one that I actually are starting to deliver and actually starting to like treat this as an actual like brand that is like you know like an actual business and not just uh, like a hobby right um so yeah, when yeah, whenever I see that, whenever I feel that that okay, this project is really, you know, they're really taking things seriously. I just you know I just kind of just double down on those on those and just you know, and uh, just leave leave the results, you know, live with the results pretty much. So I think I figured this out now. Hey, there we go. Uh, okay, perfect. Sorry, still new to Discord with. Uh, all the printing this year um having arrived late to the party for this ama you might have already answered this but what would be from each of the the leaders here a flag it's color like red green or yellow kind of thing you were surprised to discover not like a oh i should have known this one way or another like a well, this is strange i don't think i would have expected this to be an indicator of something so it, like you mean it, to hmm. recognize a rock pool or to recognize a actual good project one or the other that kind of surprised you that it was an indicator of something in the space like oh this is like a hidden thing that could indicate a higher likelihood of a rug pull or a higher indicator of a good project the the thing for me was definitely the discord online percentage before i was doing rabbits that's not a thing that i ever looked at but then as i was building uh for a project that i'm working for right like in actually doing it every day that's something that I started to realize in other projects. And then I looked at, uh, you know, some of the rug pull projects and I was like, whoa, this is really bad, right? Like you have 3000 members in literally a hundred online, right? Um, versus, you know, some other not rug pull projects that were uh, good, but uh, maybe their discord numbers were a little inflated. Uh, they'd have like 
fifteen percent, right? And so I'd say that was the big surprise for me. Is uh, pre mint you can tell a decent amount from that number, and it's not the end all be all, uh, but it will give you a very very good kind of place to start, I guess. So I think I mean this is one that I that that has popped back into my memory from like thinking about stuff but you see it's it to me it's a red flag to uh, to others not so much and and its severity is changing over time um but having a whitelist mint directly on top of the main mint so you know when you have a whitelist mint start at seven o'clock and then a public mint start at eight o'clock um, I think that there's obvious issues around being able to do, especially with like a send ADA method, because you quickly get into a situation where you can't change over the mint address, you can't change over to a new mint address between the the pub between the whitelist and the general. Um, if anything, quote, anything goes wrong, immediately it's claimed, oh, we've got a problem with the minting. Just keep sending your ADA. Just keep sending your ADA. Minting, mint, you know, minting starting soon. And you can get both the whitelist sale and the public sale out all in one big fell fucking sweep. It does allow for maximum um, results for a project that's doing it as a scam um it lessens the information available to people that are trying to check out what's going on with the project like you know a lot of people think well let, let's see how the whitelist sale does and then we'll see whether i'm going to minute in the public um and thank you that's that's actually a really good one like so you they're, they're they're cutting off that information disc discord chat servers are always locked anyway during minting that that's not that's you know no one's surprised to see that so no one can get any information like at, at the moment of mint you control all the information you can you know the the whether whether a project is 50 percent sold out or not never take a project's word for it because the amount of times I've seen a, a, a project I thought was a bit sketchy announced yet yeah, in ten, 10 minutes after the, the, the mint, they're like 50% sold out. And then you look at a Cardano scan and you see, well, you know, there's 380 in the wallet and they've sold 200 of their 5K collection. So you, you cannot tr necessarily always trust projects at their word during mint either. And that's something to remember. Don't FOMO in and jump on a bandwagon because they said they're 50% sold out after 10 minutes. Confirm that they're 50% sold after 10 minutes. Yeah, that's a good point about the the, mint, the white list on top of the public mint um, and, and that good way to just kind of grab all that ADA all at once. It's, I hadn't really thought as much as much about that. That is good. I've been trying to rack my brain for one of uh, some silver bullet, um, red or red or green flag that hasn't been brought up yet, but I haven't haven't thought of a good one yet. Oh, I think Tularoni's about to say something. Is he back? Oh, I would say um, one red flag that I've noticed is if there's a a project that is very similar on a different blockchain that just got <laughs> yeah. minted and successful, right? Like, yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. I won't call any out by name, but when you have a project that's very successful uh, on Solana or ETH, and then less than a week later, you have the same project, almost identical. Uh, the arts changed slightly and the name has changed, right? Like the adjective has changed. Yeah, it's, it's like, a Z instead of an angry, S. <laughs> angry, yeah. It's, it, it used to be the, the angry dogs. Now it's the mad dogs. And that wasn't like me trying to shoot mad dog car club 
<laughs> yeah, like shot, that, shot, that shot's the not fired there, animals. by the way. <laughs> yeah, I'm I'm just coming up with adjectives and yeah, animals. Yeah, right. Like uh, we had angry dogs, now we have mad dogs on Cardano. Like that's that's a pretty big red flag. I, I you know, they're mints in a in a month, and I don't like I don't think that's that's a good thing. Um, I would say that's a red flag. Uh, if it's a copy of a a very similar project on a different blockchain specifically ones that just recently yeah um minted right um yeah. and that being said there's also a difference between a, a copy and a derivative right like chilled kongs for example is a a derivative right they take a lot of inspiration from board yeah. apes they're different their art is unique their, their art is its own. Obviously, I don't think anybody looks at a Kong and goes, oh, man, they they just stole that art, right? Like, they, they definitely did their own thing, right? They, they took inspiration from it. But then you see some that are a little closer, right? And it's like, oh, these look almost identical, but uh, the hat says a different name, right? Uh, the hat says a, di yeah. a different adjective in... You know, they, they flipped it to face left. Yeah. I mean, to, to, to add to that as well, um, projects that look... that Projects that are obvious copyright rip-offs, whether it's Marvel, whether it's Lego, whether it's, you know, whatever other obviously copyrighted to, to, to the moon and back. Like you know, just just stay away from those ones. Just like if 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 it's an NFT that's got you know, king kings of Marvelonia, and then you've got Thor with a with a black eye instead of a white eye, that's half dubbed over in the wrong place on a really awful layer. Then stay away from it. Just just flat out yeah. stay away from it. And that being said, just because a project has, um, like pop culture inspired traits doesn't mean that that's an issue right yeah. it's more yeah, yeah, so yeah, yeah, it's exactly. a direct rip yeah. off yeah. right like the, the, the has well, to be, a, there has to be inspiration involved yeah and so there you can get away with a lot with fair use uh from what i understand right like yeah. we have for example like a scouter right from dragon ball z yeah. their power levels over nine thousand, right but we didn't take one from the show and put it in the drop, right? Max and Rackinar drew it themselves, yeah. right? We took inspiration from it. Uh, the difference would be if you took a picture of Goku and was like, all right, this is, uh, this is uh, Guko, yeah. and uh, he's our main character. Yeah, there's. I mean, yeah, you can get away with stuff, but then there's there's stuff that's that you obviously can't get away with. Like, if 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 it seems like if if you have to ask the question, can they really do that? They probably can't. Like in a lot of cases. Like you know, if it's fun and you know, they it's obviously their own work. It, it's fine. But if they can't say this is our own work, then then it's really not going to be. But yeah, and when you think of, when you think about it as well, like those those projects who kind of, I mean, copy like other projects, you know, in other ecosystems, um, like just outright. That's that's obviously that's a clear signal that this this can be a scam like just think about it like think about the founder like that that doesn't take any uh, creativity you know for you to just basically copy someone else's like you know creativity right yeah. and just trying to like make it your own like that's like, like that questions your integrity like so if you want to if you if you're investing your hard-earned money are you willing to invest it on that kind of a person that would take someone else's work and then trying to make a copy of it. And um, if even if, okay, say even if, if it's the same person, like on another ecosystem, like doing a duplicate 
of his own project on, a, on another ecosystem, what does that tell you about a person? That person is just trying to like milk the, the fact that they can launch this thing very quickly to make money. Like, I mean, I, me personally, I don't know about other people. Me personally, if I see that, that's like a huge red flag for me that, you know, some, someone is trying to like cash grab here. And I just completely avoid that project, especially if I if I start seeing them on Cardano, and they already you know, there's like a very very similar one on another blockchain. That's just an instant red red flag for me. Um, so, yeah, but, that, yeah. but but that's I, I'm assuming that's not the case for a project who's been designed to be cross chain from the outset. So like you know there's there's projects like uh, the Beast Boys Club. Sorry, the Beast Club Beast Boy Club. That you know they're specifically designed to have three thousand three hundred thirty-three on Solana and three thousand three hundred thirty-three on Cardano. Would would that be a red flag to you? Um, that's pretty. Ah, uh, uh, I don't know. I don't know because, about because like because it why, is because it's like essentially that it's the same project and it's been designed to be cross-chain to to introduce people from both ecosystems to each other and provide crossover links and support and, and everything like that. Like, right. You know, it, 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 Actually, it, I have a thought on that if you guys can hear me. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, go ahead. I'm, I'm sorry, I've been, having, well, I've been having crazy audio issues. I have an Android, so I don't know what the heck's going on with it. But <laughs> uh, Yeah, I just use my PC, to be honest. You know, that's a good idea, but, you know, my wife has me doing a lot of jobs right now, so i got to move around, right? <laughs> <laughs> but, I mean, my thought my thought on that, you know, is kind of, you know, I really liked all the direct answer you guys have given over the last little bit, but mine's kind of indirect where it goes back to the thing I was mentioning earlier, right? It's like, you know, if there's five, you know, that one thing alone might not be a red flag to me. What would be a red flag is if there's six or seven things I see you know, six or seven things I'm looking at um, at the project, whether they're, they're all their different social accounts or how they're interacting and so all the stuff we've been talking about. Right. Like maybe maybe I'm finding like if I start if I get two or three of those things that are potentially a red flag, maybe that generates the red flag. Right. Yeah. Yeah, um, for sure. Maybe. Like, I mean, everything's as a gradient. I mean, like, for me, like, you know, a, a clear red flag from the outset is when I look at the the NFT and if there's anything that makes me wince about it, like a layer out of place and, and things like that, then that to me shows that they're sloppy and they're slapdash. You know, this this is, the, you know, one of their first previews they're putting out and it looks like shit. Then, then I'm going to avoid the project because... They obviously don't want to put the time and the effort into correct what is an obviously glaring, glaring error. Yeah, no, for sure. Hey, you know, there's actually a, a direct thing I thought about too. Just, just now is, you know, I, I see from time to time, not very common, but every now and then you'll see projects that are, you know, pe persons that are a part of, maybe not the project as a whole, but just persons on the team that might be very um confrontational or argumentative or or sensitive and willing you know you gotta you know a lot of t in, the nft projects are no different than running any enterprise in the world where you're going to have people you know very positive you're gonna have very pe people very negative you're gonna have people that are reasonable or unreasonable and you always have to you know be able to keep that temperament and uh manage those situations right and you know and we see that sometimes you know most of the time that's you know, handled pretty well with most folks, but you'll see sometimes projects where they, they're not very good at handling it and that. And while that might not be a red flag on a, a scam or a bad project or something, it may indicate their, you know, um, ability to handle tough situations, right? Yeah, if they aren't able to handle questions in an AMA, for example, um, from the people that are essentially their customers, right, for a business, how are they going to be able to handle uh, partnership conversations as a business person? Or uh, when somebody who isn't interested in the project at all uh, gives them hard criticism, how are they going to react to that? And all of those things reflect on a project. Yeah, you, know, you, you definitely have to take into account overall personas um like 
you know, it, the 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 CNFT space is such that you know collaborations are, are very important between projects, and you have to you know when, when you're dealing with all these different projects, you have to be able to talk to somebody that you know got out of school with no qualifications and you know that doesn't have knowledge all the way through to people that are, are, are COOs of 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 respected organizations and you know very technical like lawyers and and all sorts and there's definitely a skill in being able to communicate with all the different people that you need to be able to communicate with whether it's you know even even like between the team you know so so the vision can be shared from the the founders to the developers to to the artists and keep everything in a cohesive manner And apparently that summed it up quite well. <laughs> I would say so. That was a pretty good one. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> the, the the silence after after generally suggests that the uh, the, the subject is uh, dealt with. I guess. Um, if there's any, is there any more questions or anything like that? I think. I mean, we've been running for approaching three hours now, so. Uh, might have to start thinking about wrapping it up soon so I can get some dinner. Yeah, um, I came in a little bit late, um, but um, it would be nice if we could do this again. Is there like a, a scheduled uh, time when 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 you do these um, AMAs? Um, I'm pretty new to the to the community as well, so. Yeah, so uh, all the AMAs are listed in advance on our events tab on the Discord server. Um, I generally announce them an hour before, an hour ahead of them happening as well. Um, don't really have like a set timetable for them. I just it's generally a case of fitting in people when people are available. Um, we do have uh, quite some quite exciting ones. Um, we have uh, Tash coming from um, the uh, LA hip hop scene. Um, he's uh, launching a project uh, with uh, Exhibit and a few others. Um, so he's going to be coming along uh, Monday week. Um, he's promised to bring a special guest. Uh, we're not able to confirm who that is because of availability, but there's there's some very big names thrown out for that one possibly turning up. So uh, th that, that'll be one to be here for. Um, as far as more of these types of discussions, um, Figured I'd see how well received it was and um, how popular it was, um, but it's certainly possible that this could become perhaps like a monthly thing. Um, I'd definitely like to have something like you know that keeps reasonably up date up to date for uh, new people entering the space and you know give them an introduction to things that they should be looking for that they know is recent and uh, up up with uh, latest developments and everything. So. Uh, so yeah, we'll, we'll see about repeating this one, like you know, in a month or so, perhaps. Speaking about like popular um, celebrities, um, I think the guy, uh, the the folks from Claymates, they they invited um, Ice Cube to um, the consensus event, um, and uh, yeah, it was pretty crazy <laughs> to see Ice Cube and. Um, you know, I think um, the other guy, the guy from Lord of the Rings, what's the name of the guy? Uh, Fro Fro Frodo. Oh, uh, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, uh, that, that guy. Uh, yeah. I think Wood I, or I, something. I, Elijah, Elijah. Yeah, Elijah Wood. Elijah Wood. Yeah, yeah. He was there as well. I, it was just crazy. Like, I mean, Cardano, like, for any people can say whatever they want, but, like, it seems like a lot of celebrities are just, like, showing up. Like, yeah, Snoop Dogg. You know, you have, uh, you have like uh, Martin Lawrence, um, you know, doing something with NFT Maker. Like, what's going on? Like, it seems like this all the celebrities are coming to Cardano. It's pretty dope. <laughs> yeah, I mean, th th this is what this is what has driven the ETH market as much as it has done. It's it's celebrities and influencers outside of the crypto world getting involved. It's you know. It's, it's your Jimmy Fallon's, it's your Paris Hilton's, it's, you know, it's, these are the people that, 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 that drive consumer demand and consumer awareness. 
probably a little right. bit more on the demand than the awareness than, than we'd like to think but <laughs> <laughs> yeah that's true that's true <laughs> so as, as you were actually at consensus and and we've got you here um give us your top points on on, on what happened for your experience there um to be quite frank um personally i did not get to enjoy the event as much because um being um like being an employee uh, at bitmart um, bitmart.com uh we had we had we had our own booth there so uh for the most of the time i was there um present and like you know talking to people about about bitmart and you know why we're better than other exchanges you know so um every now and then i'll just like walk around you know and you know go see go see what's going on but i i did attend some of the talks and i actually uh saw um, vitalik um show showed up on one of the metaverse talks and nice. um obviously uh, sorry were you gonna say something uh, no I was, just, I was just commenting nice like as you were going on right 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 and quite frankly when i so when i listened to that to that particular talk about the met met metaverse and you know there were folks from you know uh, the, the the main speakers um kind of i don't know i kind of felt like it just shows how early we are in this whole like nft metaverse you know you know um industry because quite frankly it seems like they really struggled to really like um paint a picture of what the metaverse is i'm, I'm not saying i'm like i'm an expert or anything but you know it just i don't know i just felt like they didn't like really um i guess make the uh, make the case of why uh, this is going to be like the next big thing um i mean they they did a pretty decent job but it wasn't like oh my god like this light bulb moment um i mean they talked about something about fashion and and using nfts uh, you know i mean overall it was a very good event you know obviously everybody there was a lot of traffic and people stopping by asking questions and you know, wanted to learn more. Um, I met with um, the um, Patrick from NFT uh, Maker. Um, you know, a lot of people were just like swanning him and asking him questions and stuff. <laughs> uh, same thing with the Cardano booth. It was just, you know, everybody, you know, just it was just packed. Everybody was just <laughs> trying to see Charles, and it was pretty, it was pretty cool. Uh, you know, to to get to see them in person, because uh, that was my first time seeing Charles and Vitalik as well. But um, overall fun events um, and there were just like speakers different speakers you know um, across the whole um, across the whole events uh, if you're lucky you know if you see um, for example uh, there's a there was a basketball player who came and he spoke but just because everywhere was so crowded I couldn't even find exactly where he was <laughs> um, <laughs> but overall it was just a great great experience and seeing people who are actually uh, who actually believe in this whole thing um, the blockchain industry the crypto industry and funny enough like my, me personally uh, a lot of people who came by our booth uh, there was a lot of young people coming in and there were a, a lot of people, I think like maybe five or six, seven, like they came like looking for internship, um, just fresh out of you know college or still in college. And they wanted to be a part of this industry. Like, can I come work for you guys for free? Um, and I had uh, another guy uh, with his son, you know, say, hey, can you, can you, my son is really passionate about this industry. He wants to be a part of, you know, he wants to learn about crypto and blockchain. You know, can, do you guys have some uh, in, internship program, like, like non-paid, just free, um, that he just wants to learn. So just seeing that and just seeing how excited people are about this industry, uh, it, was, it was a very pleasant experience, um, quite frankly. But, um, but yeah. And, and one, one, one other thing I will say, one other thing I will say, and I think Patrick uh, from NFT Maker brought this point. Um, there's a lot of projects you know, doing, kind of doing the same thing. You know, a lot of people coming up with new like blockchains and L1s and L2s. It's like, do we really need all of this like different like, you know, blockchains and everything? It's just uh, different DEXs or different like yield programs. I mean, that's something I just took out of it. It's like, do we really need this much? of these projects um i mean at the end of the day we need to create that killer killer app that is going to bring you know the rest of the non-crypto people into the industry 
and it just seems like right now everybody's just trying to like do their own thing um but it is what it is yeah i mean it's donkey donkey cc um you from i, I can remember i remember your username you were in my uh you're in the, in the ghost chain and club um group um server i just noticed your name uh, so shout out just give yeah. me a shout out uh, Donkey CC is 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 a value tool head who's who's been around for a while, and uh, yeah, uh, love the guy. Awesome. <coughs> uh, yeah, it, it was kind of cool when I joined uh, your server a while ago to see him in there actually. But uh, yeah, we got an AMA with you guys coming up. Uh, is it Tuesday? Or am I getting mixed up now? Uh, I don't think so. You mean with, with us, Ghost Chain NFT Club? Oh, no, no, yeah. I had, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I've got so many things booked. Like, <laughs> I sometimes forget what's on the list and what's happened. Yeah. Well, I mean, yeah, how, I'll love to do, do an AMA um, one, of these, one of these days uh, with you guys. Yeah, I mean, uh, like, yeah, I mean, uh, yeah, it will definitely be fun. Um, yep. <laughs> but yeah, uh, I'm thinking that we're probably at a fairly reasonable time to round up just under the three hour mark. So, uh, I'd like to thank each and every one of you that's, uh, that, that's still here. And I mean, button, you're a legend for making it for, for the entire, in the entire time and everybody else that's, that's still here making it the entire way through, like much love to you all. Um, if you're still watching on YouTube, like hats off to you. Thank you very, very much. Um, if you enjoyed it, feel free to give it a like and a share and, uh, and, and maybe a subscribe too. Um, we'll be back with, uh, another AMA tomorrow. Um, just bring up who it is quickly. Uh, yes, it's, uh, Chasing Pass tomorrow, which is a, a golf based, uh, NFT project. So, uh, yeah, that, that'll be a bit different. Um, and yeah, thank you all for coming and, uh, Look forward to seeing you all again soon. Thank you for having me, man. It, it was a pleasure. Thank you. Have fun.